welcome in everybody it's nope. crunch time it's crunch time Stand with time. jeff Bruner, lucas and mike this is gonna be an up a very positive <laughs> you know very fun show because we're gonna go through what happened today boys which is something we talked about it's something we covered on this show a lot yes, over the last couple of days that was dj reader to the detroit lions oh. And he's a Detroit home. Lion confirmed today. And we're going to get into that. We're going to have Micro Mike join the program at 8.30. He'll help us break down DJ and much more. We're going to talk about what's going around around the NFL, how it relates to the Detroit Lions. We'll get into some rumors. We had some press conferences today. DJ Reader, Marcus Davenport. I'm excited for everything, boys. Welcome in, everyone in the chat. How are you guys feeling tonight? Well, you were saying this was an uplifting show, and, and the mu- I'm not gonna lie, the music's not like uplifting. It's like a vibe, you know what I mean? It's like a good vibe. Good vibe. I feel like I'm sitting in like a, a waiting room to listen to DJ Reader uh, press conference or something. That's what this feels like right now. It's like, like a, a, it's a like wee a, you know, menu it's, screen. It's like a happy, you know. Everyone's... No, this is this is a this is a good little vibe. I like yep. this, Joe. Lucas That's is the house vibe. music guy, like guru though. So like he's all about. I'm pl- about to play Wee Bowling right now. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> well, fellas, let's get right into it. DJ Reader, he's a Detroit Lion. He is a he is. Detroit Lion, and I want to put this here on the screen, and I'll, I'll show the people. Booner put this out pretty quickly right after it was first reported. Bang, bang. It was rumored, it was confirmed, he was going to visit Detroit today and meet with the Detroit Lions. And what was one thing we talked about, guys, when we heard the news? Don't <laughs> let him leave the building. Don't let him leave the building. It was that simple. And he didn't leave the building. Uh, so <laughs> we, he signed upon <laughs> arriving. And what, 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 what's funny? This is unprofessional for me. I apologize. The music was killing me, dude. I just kept in my head, just thinking like, I'm in the Tetris <laughs> menu. Like I'm just like going through, like I'm about to play some pong or something. I'm just like, everything's going through my head. Like, just, I'm sorry. This was, this it's is the sta- stand up booner. Like it was just, it was coming up. The unprofessional DJ reader, baby Detroit line. Let's go. Well, let me on Jeff. <laughs> This is what I thought Booner was left. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I got it after the first time. I understood at that point. What All was right, it? Let's, uh, let's show, let's show this tweet. I'm going to show it. It was first reported, of course, by jo- um, Jordan Schultz from Bleacher Report. He had the uh, the inside scoop when the deal when when it was first inked. I'm going to share it on the screen here. We'll get everyone's thoughts on it. So here it is. The details include, you can see it on the lower third there. Uh, Booner put out breaking news. Detroit Lions are signing defense alignment. DJ Reader do a two-year deal worth up to two or $27.25 million. Brad Holmes adds another big-time piece next to Aline McNeil, a free agent that a lot of Detroit Lions fans wanted to sign. Now, fellas, we know what DJ Reader is, right? We know what kind of impact he has. Uh, I, we have a video on our channel kind of breaking it down, or at least our live reaction. We'll get more into it today. And we posted something a couple days ago kind of talking about what he can bring. And I'll just start with some of the stuff that everyone should know, right? They needed another defensive tackle. Yeah, Benito Jones signed with the Miami Dolphins sooner after this news was announced. He is a significant upgrade over Benito Jones. This is a big <laughs> game, big playmaker, right? Given the circumstances, the higher the the the, you know, the higher the intensity, the better he plays. And it's shown that, right? He, he got to a Super Bowl with the Bengals. He played his best games in the playoffs. He's been a top 15, top 10 tackle defensive lineman, not even just defensive tackle the last two years, according to PFF. If you look at the grades, he had 34 pressures last year, fellas, which was tied for Aline McNeil last year. Like you could talk all you want about, yeah, he's a run stuffer, but he's a he's a he's a game wrecker. It's what he does, guys. He commands a double team, and this is only good for all three levels for, of your defense. Aiden Hutchinson, this benefits him, benefits Ali McNeil, it benefits uh, your linebacking core, it benefits your secondary. It just affects your entire defense. And one thing you can say is with the running backs being moved all around the NFL, the NFC North making moves, signing running backs, this is a guy. This is like a chess move for Brad Holmes to counter that. Lucas brought that up today. It's a great point. So I love it, boys. DJ Reader, Detroit Line. Yeah. And to be honest, fellas, like I, I think 
we know what he could do on the field, and, and I think everyone knows that around the NFL now. Like they know who DJ Reader is, they know what he's about. He, he's gonna take on double T. He's gonna do everything on the field, and you know what you're getting out of him. The best part to me, and I don't know if a lot of people in the chat or you guys even watched this uh the press conference that he had. It was absolutely, if you guys don't watch this, haven't watched it yet, go watch it after our show. Uh, we may have some clips of it, but it makes you want to run through a wall. And, like, we talk about it, and, and it feels like it's sometimes people make it as jokes and everything. But, like, the fact that at the end of the day, it, it comes down to where it's like, oh, he's a Dan Campbell. He's a Brad Holmes guy. And it feels like, yeah, that's just, like, a cliche to say, thing to say. Some of the things, like, and I have some quotes here, and I'm just going to read a couple of them off because – it, it just it's like this is the right guy in the building and he could do it on the field he, he the very first thing he started off was when i came in the building from the top down the energy in here it's insane the first thing he said he's about dan campbell it says he already is saying i would like i met him shook his shook his hand looked him in the eyes and just by looking him in the eyes and talking to him i would already run through a wall for him like i'm mad like think about that your head coach is coming in there and doing that and a guy like dj reader being like i'm gonna run through a wall for dan campbell already first day day one and then he just starts breaking everything down man like he's a, he's he's been a team captain for the Bengals. He, he does everything he's played with guys like jj why i think this is like the perfect piece for a, even like for a young guy like Aline mcneil to be next to and sit there and just be like let me learn from you dj reader you learn from guys like tj why you've been around that and then he also he praised aiden hutchinson as well he, he even went to aiden hutchinson about aiden hutchinson saying he's one of the most unique pass rushers in the game right now so I'm I'm all in on DJ Reader, boys. I'm 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 all I'm all in on this man. Yeah, I mean, and let's let's hope and pray. My Wi-Fi has been acting crazy, so let's hope and pray <laughs> we get through the show together, fellas. But when you talk about what DJ Reader brings and what Jeff already brought up, you look not only with the running backs inside the NFC North now, Josh mm -hmm. Jacobs, Aaron Jones going to Minnesota, DeAndre Swift returning to Chicago, so he's going to be returning to the NFC North, not returning to Chicago. But then even like Christian McCaffrey, they got to play the Texans. So Joe Mixon, Saquon in Philadelphia. DJ Readers is something that they needed regardless of what they were going into this season. And then you look at the upcoming schedule, he's going to be able to exploit the guards and the centers around the NFC because if you really look around it, Landon Dickerson in Philadelphia is very nice, but they just lost Jason Kelsey. The Packers, they just lost Joe Tooney, who was their best interior offensive lineman. The Bears offensive line is part of the interior. It definitely needs some improvement. And the Vikings outside of um, – who's their tackle right now? Darren Saul. Was in, uh, Darren Saul. Outside of Darren Saul, they really don't have anything going for him. So DJ Reader is going to be able to exploit some key matchups for the Lions going forward, and I think he's going to be a big difference maker. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Booner kind of said it. He's the perfect guy for Bradrick and Aline to learn from. And if you look at what Eric Armstead got, you got him ridiculously cheaper than that deal. So not only is he the perfect guy for those guys to learn from, you got him on a great deal. And uh, I one of the quotes I like – I keep saying that this is the perfect spot for him. But one of the quotes he said earlier is, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And I think that kind of quote speaks volumes of what his situation, the Lions situation. I just think he's going to work out perfectly. The Lions MO has always been stopping the run. And what better guy to do that and help out with that than DJ Reader? Yeah, and I saw a couple of comments like that, too, where it's like, well, the Lions are already good at stopping the run. No, it's it's you make what you do good great and what make what you do great even better with a guy like DJ Reader. He, he brings much more – he brings just as much on the field as he does off the field. This is great for Broderick hey. Martin. This is great for Aiden Hutchinson. It's great for everybody. Uh, he mentioned how he wants to help Aiden take his game up a step. He mentioned how, you know, off the field he's a captain at heart. He was a captain with the Bengals. Like, it's not just, yeah, you signed DJ Reader, but – and he's not – no one's saying he's Chris Jones. And, and no one's – I mean, there might be some fans that are, are maybe overrating him, but it's it, he's a he's a damn good player. He's one of the best available defensive linemen. So this was, you know a, this was a flash. He, he mentioned as well, and I know yeah, he's one of the best at stopping the run. And you already have that in the lean, but like he mentioned in his press conference today with the Hutch stuff is he's like, Hey, I want to help him out in pass rush. Like I know a guy like, like Aiden Hutchinson, who's one of the best in the league. I can take on a double team and take guys away from him. I know how to kind of um, what's the term. Uh, he used a certain uh, term here and I can't, I can't find it here. Oh, he said, help push 
uh, the pocket for Aiden Hutchinson, basically. He said, I want to help push the pocket for Aiden Hutchinson to let Aiden Hutchinson go eat. He doesn't care about sacks. He doesn't care about any of that. All he wants to do, clog the middle up, go in there, push the pocket, take on double teams, and open things up for guys like Aiden Hutchinson. And you know what, too, that we're really not talking about? It's going to help some of these guys out on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson as well, the John Kaminsky's. Like, it, it's going to help those guys out a little bit more, too, because you have two elite guys in the middle. So I'm I'm excited. I, I think this is a massive mass. I think it's way bigger than some people are. I think there's a lot of people making it like, oh, this is huge, but there's still people, eh, maybe he could have went and still gotten Daniel Hunter. No, this is still big as well. Yeah, I mean, guys, think about it like this. And we had this conversation uh, after the first day or two of free agency, and you have all these big-time defense alignment being signed elsewhere. And, and I get it. Like, the Lions fans are sitting at home, checking social media, saying, oh, this player went here. I thought we were going to get this player. Oh, this player went here. Uh, here. Daniil Hunter to the Texans. And you start to kind of get, like, FOMO. Like, you're, you're missing out on these top-tier defense alignment, which I understand that. I mean, Daniel Hunter is a damn good player. Mm -hmm. But it, it, the overreaction, we kind of had to calm everybody down a little bit um, and just kind of put into perspective that it's not like Br Brad is just going to chill in his office, smoke a stogie, and just be like, you know what? We'll be all right. Not, uh, we'll keep Benito Jones. You know, we'll just we'll, we'll we'll be we'll be all right. He upgraded two position groups that were bad. I mean, defensive tackle in terms of the you know against the run game, the run defense was was really good. But he still upgraded it. He upgraded your defensive line. Believe it or not, Marcus Davenport is another body on your defensive line, which we'll get into uh, in a little bit here before we get Mike or Mike on your secondary. Carlton Davis is much better than who you had. Uh, even Amik Robertson, much better than you had. And I know you didn't have it's it's kind of starting from ground level there, but still he he upgraded position groups that needed to be upgraded. Like that's what you that's all you can ask for without spending in in giving long term commitment, uh, spending big money and giving long term commitment. You know, so I, I think this is a this is kind of what Brad teased at the end of the season when he talked to the media. This is exactly what he did. He's a man of his word, and. I, I, I'm to be honest with you, I don't think there's anybody out there that that hates these moves. Uh, maybe you'd prefer Daniel Hunter, but man, I mean, <clears throat> kudos to Brad. You upgraded the roster. That was his goal, and that's what happened. And we don't, we haven't even got to the draft yet, which that's where he really cooks. That's his bread and butter, is the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. the, think about the 24 hours of the Lions fans, though. And I know there's a lot of people in here, too, who were – coming at me and some of us here on the show because we we're like oh you guys are brad slappies no like th these are moves that we knew that was going to happen and things he was going to do 24 hours ago 48 hours ago it was th there were literally people out there saying brad holmes is is, is the a bad guy he's this he's that like what are we doing here let that man go on and w do his job let him cook and then we can judge him at the end of the offseason if you don't think he, he helped this team get better at the end of the offseason let's have those conversations and i think jeff gentry lucas i think you all and all of us are as much as I, you guys people call me a slappy there was times during the season where i got people coming at me because i was going at the lines and going at people on the team and, and it's just like hey we're going to be realistic at the end of the day these are the moves to where it's like he's taking a step forward. That's exactly what you – like, you have to wait and see what he does. The last 24 hours I'm, – I'm not going to lie, be honest with you boys, I was very disappointed in a lot of people and a lot of Lions fans that the way they reacted. Very disappointed. I have some screenshots of some people that I know of saying that, hey, not a brand, Brad Holmes, I'm, I'm out on – like, what are we doing here? Like, what, what are we really do? Like, come on. Let that people man cook. We can talk about – Dude, I've got, I've got, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and air that out, but I've got some screenshots that I, I wanted to make sure and some bookmarks that some of people, receipts. because yeah, it's just, it's annoying. What are we doing here? And, and then like people coming at me because I'm, I tried to stick up for him. And then 24 hours later, he pulls off a great move and then it's, Hey, yeah, we love him all in. Brad's the King. Brad's the, no, come on. Yeah. And again, I, I'll, I'll say this. I don't have a problem with people because I always say nobody is absolved from blame. Even I criticize. I mean, I criticize. Yeah, no one's absolved. Or yeah, it was just, thank you. I mean, no one's absolved from criticism. I criticize Dan Campbell at the end of the NFC Championship game. Like, I think if if there's valid criticism, I'm always willing to listen. I think that's the great thing about sports. You have opinions, we could talk about it. Um, but you saw some of the comments, though. I mean, to Booner's point, Crazy. there was comments on a video we had about uh, what he did in free agency. We had a couple of videos, 
and there's a lot of comments. I mean, go check. They're all there. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to give out your receipts, but they're all there. Like people just crap and I'm out on Brad or, you know, Brad didn't, uh, it was a big nothing burger. He failed Lions fans like all this, which again, I get the frustration, but like, really? I mean, I'm happy with this move. I think DJ readers an upgrade still have the draft. We'll see. There's still plenty of time. We have June cuts. There's more players out there, Um, but there's no way you can argue. He didn't upgrade the roster. It might not be who you wanted, but there's no argument for he didn't upgrade the he upgraded the roster. He upgraded your defense, which again your secondary was a problem. They got better, so that it, it that's it. Like there's no reason you really have nothing at this point. So kudos to Brad Holmes for getting this deal done. I mean, not letting him leave the building. Yeah, I mean, when you look at this defensive roster as of right now and how the depth chart is compared to last season. And you look at how the Lions had, what, a top five run defense, and then obviously the secondary was probably bottom three. I think without or with adding all the pieces, they're at least a top 20 secondary right now when you add in the part where Brian Branch is going to get better. Cam Sutton's not a CB1. He's a CB2. That's a good mm-hmm. situation to have than a Meek. They're probably a top 20 secondary. So when you even that out, it's probably going to be a top 15 to 20 defense, which is dramatically better overall than what they were last year. To your point, Jeff, and Booner and Gentry, not just because it's not Daniil Hunter, it's DJ Reader. Just because it's not Jadavius uh, Ward or not Jadavius, Lejarius Sneed, it's Carlton Davis. Like just because it's not the players you want doesn't mean that this defense isn't a lot better. Let's cue up the video. Uh, we have a clip. We have two clips here. One on DJ Reader. This is per the Lions on their Twitter from the Lions. I uh, appreciate them for putting this out. We have one of him talking about him and Aiden being able to play with Aiden. Then the next clip I'm going to play uh, and after uh, after this clip, after we kind of break it down, is going to be kind of him discussing the injury. Because we, we discussed that as well, right? The two torn quads and, and what the concern level is. So uh, here's here's this. This is him talking again on, on how he can uh, impact Aiden Hutchinson and, and help this defense as a whole. Aiden's one of the most unique edge rushers we have in the league right now. I mean, you, one, you don't have too many people that size who can bend the edge like he can, who's pretty relentless in the rush like he is. He gets hot. He's like a hot shooter. You watch him during the playoffs. When he gets hot or those games when he has, like, multiple sacks or catches a pick or those things, he gets hot and he's feeling it. You can tell he's feeling it. And that's that's always fun to play beside. When you find a player who gets hot like that and you can help push the pocket, maybe things a little bit easier for him. That way he can really run the edge. You don't got to counter inside, those things. But when you got a guy like that who's got pretty much every move in his bag and can do whatever, you just try to be able to be a good teammate, man. I'm just trying to be there and motivate him. I know how hot, see how hot he gets. I want to be on that sideline giving him a speech. Like, when he is hot, I'm, I want to be hyping him up, be his biggest cheerleader on the, on the sideline. And when he isn't, I want to get him in that zone. So it's it's fun. It'll be fun to be able to tap into that that young talent. Honestly, I, I think, mean, like, guys, he kind of what I said earlier, too, about what he brings off the field as well as on the field. That kind of spoke to what he just said. Um, it's not just the player DJ reader. It's the human being DJ reader. You know, him him being there, uh, not not that his job is to coach guys up or anything like that. You have Terrell Williams, by the way, who's one of the best, if not the best defensive line coaches. So I'm excited for him to be able to work with this defensive line. But on top of that, Aiden Hutchinson, like this is what people have been asking for. They People want to unlock Aiden Hutchinson and, and, and help him reach his full potential. With doing that, you need to add help on this defensive line. And I think when people say that, like he needs help, he needs help. People like to think he had another guy next to him, like a Daniil Hunter, which certainly would help. But you know how else you can help him? You add a DJ reader who demands double teams. That's also how you allow Aiden to get more one-on-ones. That's also how you allow Ali McNeil to get one-on-ones. Like that, and whoever's on the other side, James Houston, Marcus Davenport, that's how you that's how you improve everybody uh, on your yeah. defensive line and on your defense as a whole. So, boys, you want Aiden Hutchinson to be a 15 sack per year guy, that man right there is going to help him do that. No question and about it. To those comments, too, uh, of him kind of coming out saying, like, I want to hype him up. I want to come in there and lead and, and kind of be that type of person on this team outside of on the field. I feel like with this Lions team and what Brad's kind of bringing in, I feel like it's more important to get a guy like DJ reader than it is to go out and get one of those big names that you're talking about there, Jeff. Like that's the way my mind goes with it, with, with this Detroit lions team, like how they win football games. Sometimes it's not about like the more, like who's the better player. It's about like this team, just like they, they, 
bind together so well and they're they're able to play with each other and like that's what this team's about and dj reader fits into that it's like yeah the the daniel hunter you don't need a guy maybe on the other side that's going to go get that many sacks you don't need that you need a a dj reader who's going to help be a leader in the middle he's he's already proven in the nfl what he can do he's going to make Aiden hutchinson better like that is what you need. You need your your star player on your defense to be playing at his best. That's what DJ Reader is going to do for your, this football team. And he's going to as well. Guess what? He's going to stop the run at an elite level, and he's going to blow some plays up. Like I, I, I almost think, and and um, Dion said it as well, and he said it on his show I was tuned in that he would have rather had DJ Reader than Daniel Hunter. As this kind of goes, and we watch the press conference and the guy he is, I'm almost on that because that's what this football team needs. I'm I'm almost on that. And and I think he means also, what do you think? I mean, I would assume by that, Lucas, he means like money, like everything. I, money we wise, well, like value. Yeah. It's everything. It's value. It's it's what does he bring like leadership wise? What does he play on the football field? It's like the whole package. And then DJ Reader brings everything. And you what you you don't have, you didn't pay him that much. Yeah, Way I worse. mean, he, this is this is a role that not only is he know how to accept now, but that he's been doing since he stepped foot in the NFL. You look in 2016, I believe it was he was drafted to the Houston Texans. Well, in 2016, who was on the edge for the Houston Texans? Oh, I don't know, JJ Watt. And learning yep. from how can I help JJ Watt out? He takes that to Cincinnati. You look at Trey Hendrickson. Look at what he's doing. And even on the other side of Booner's part point earlier, yeah, not only can Aiden Hutchinson develop, but look at the edge on the other side, Sam Hubbard. Sam Hubbard, look, he's an Ohio State Buckeye. I love him, but you talk about DJ Reader. Sam Hubbard's had some 10-sack seasons, and that's not a guy that can usually go out there and get 10 sacks. So now you put him in Detroit, a guy like Aiden Hutchinson, he's going to know how to develop Aiden Hutchinson without, within his own game. So I think this is a guy to your guys' point where he's going to take Hutch to that step that people expected this year, the, that second step, that sophomore year jump. He didn't really have what people expected, but this year I think it's coming. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the most underrated part about um, DJ oh. Reader, obviously, we know his skill set and what he's going to do to help stop the run, but it's just got to be his leadership and how much he's going to help the others around him grow. Like, he's obviously a superstar and he's been great with the Bengals, but just that how much he's brought out and his teammates, like Lucas's point, is really what's going to be the most underrated part about him coming to Detroit. Yeah, I think you nailed it, uh, Lucas, when you you mentioned kind of what he's done for – I think that was a great point, what he's done for other guys, uh, Trey Hendrickson to be specific. I mean, he had two – not saying he, you credit him for everything, but of course he's a no. huge help. He's a huge mm-hmm. help um, to be able just to, uh, again, attract double teams, allow J.J. Watt, allow Trey Hendrickson to get one-on-ones. And that, he's going to do that for eight hundred. Not that Aleem McNeil – I mean, Aleem's good. Now you got Aleem McNeil and D.J. Reader. So, you know, it's, it's, it's quite that, it's really that simple. I, I think Scary. this is again, a great, a great signing from the lions. I'm glad they were able to get it done. I'm going to play this clip here of, you know, him discussing the injuries because he did, he, he tore both his quads. Of course the lions, you know, they approved it. So you know, they, obviously they feel comfortable with how he, you know, his, his health, at least at this point. So here's, here's that clip kind of discussing those injuries. Um, and as, and as a player and, I know I'm going to get in there and grind every single day. And where that grind ends, ends I can deal with that. So, you know, I, I, where it puts me, I can deal with that. And so I'm excited. I'm excited for the opportunity to go in there and really work and be ready for the beginning of the season. You know, I hold yeah. myself to a high school. So, state. again, he didn't need to get into specifically the injuries, but his overall point is like, listen, I'm going to grind. Like, I'll be ready. Um, obviously, the, like I said, the Lions medical team, they cleared him. So, man, the <laughs> – Getting older on the defensive line and also, but not old as in, you know, wall. I'm talking experience yeah, no. is probably mm-hmm. the right word to, to say. Guys that have played in a lot of big games. Uh, I want to welcome in here our, our friend, Micro Mike, because he's going to help us break this down. And, of course, talk a little bit about the Lions offseason. Let's get him in here, shall we? Micro Mike. Hey, what's going on, fellas? What's going on, man? Happy uh, free agency Ford week. Field. And, uh, yeah, man, Ford Field right now. Hey, well, Mike, we appreciate you for taking the time. You can find Mike, of course, Lions Talk by Chat Sports, Micro Mike. Uh, you can check him out. We'll have the link in the description. Mike, I want your initial reaction, DJ Reader. I know you, you're probably posting some stuff on your channel, which people can go check out. But what 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 can DJ Reader bring to the Detroit Lions? How would you grade the signing? I'm giving this an A. I think it's an A signing. It's a great signing. I wanted the interior of the defensive line to be addressed, and they did that. Now you put DJ Reader and Ali, Mc, Ali McNeil together. Oh, my God, that's fantastic. It's going to open it up for Aiden Hutchinson a little bit. And I got, I got to say this. You know, you know, you bring in Josh, 
Jacobs over there for the uh, Green Bay Packers, DeAndre Swift for the Chicago Bears, Aaron Jones over there for the Vikings. And now we can even stop the run even better. We were number two last year. Let's go ahead and make it number one. This is a great signing. I know a lot of people say, oh, the sacks, folks. Folks, he's a nose tackle. So he's going to be stopping the run and taking on those double teams. He's not going to be the sack master. The sack hey, Mike, do, I like that. The, the sack master. Um, <laughs> hey, quick, quick question. Like following this DJ Reader stuff, um, it feels like like Brad, obviously, he, he's got corners, uh, defensive tackle brought in an edge, different pieces. Where do you think his next step is and kind of the next move here in free agency? I, I still at least I feel like there's probably one more piece to be done before the draft just because there's a handful of pieces still left. What do you what, what is your next step here? You think for Brad? You know, it's interesting here. He, they can go in many different routes. I'd like for them to get another edge rusher. I still would like it. Look, Marcus Davenport, I think he's a situational guy, but I'd still like to get a little more depth there. And, and at that point, man, just resign your own guys. Get ready for the draft where you can get your guard to replace Jonah Jackson or a corner or whoever you want to get in the draft. I think the main portion is done. But if we can get one more guy at the edge, I, that would be that would satisfy me for sure. You just want to make sure that this defensive line is throwing waves of folks at teams this year. We need we, we need to get after the quarterback. We need to make sure that we get pressure up front. And that's what I'd like to see. And then just focus on the draft. That's what it's all about, folks. It's the draft. I know a lot of people love free agency and they you know, they say Brad Holmes is a bum because we don't get the guy that they want. But let's be honest here. It's majority draft. You want to build the roster through the draft. That's where you're going to get your studs. And that's what uh, Brad Holmes has done. That's why this team is good. Yeah, Mike. Moves have been made. And some Lions fans that were hating on Brad the last couple of days, they've been shut up. But especially after this DJ Reader signing, who do you think on the defense is going to take the biggest step forward next year? Ooh, the biggest step forward. That is a, a, a fantastic question. You know what? How how about we go with Jack Campbell? You know, he he come in here as a rookie last year, and you know Alex Anzalone and Derek Barnes getting a lot of credit. I could see a big jump for him coming in this year, especially with the defensive line getting better with the run stuffing. Jack Campbell then probably can get more tackles and hopefully get a bigger role for this football team. You know, spent the 18th pick on him, so I'd love to see him from a defensive pr uh, perspective to take that next step for sure. Mike, obviously we, we expect a few more moves to be made in free agency, but what kind of angle do you think the Lions take with their first round pick now that some of these moves have been made? You know, that is so awesome because it's going to be difficult for us to figure out what they're going to do with that first pick. They got corners in free agency, so you're not pressed to get there. They got a defensive tackle, so you're not pressed to get there. They got an edge rusher, you're not pressed to get there. You look at it, it's like, okay, guard. That's the one need, but Brad Holmes, he does BPA. So I think if it's a guard, edge, corner, or even a, a defensive tackle at 29, the best player available, that's the route they're going to go. I, I truly do believe that. I know a lot of people don't want to go offensive line, but make no mistake about it. If there is a starting guard at 29 that that the Lions can get to, to place in, in front of Jonah Jackson, that's the route they should go. Maybe a, a pass rusher falls there. They can go anyway. That's what I love about this free agency so far. They get two corners, an edge, and a DT. Well, you, you pretty much got a lot of holes kind of filled up. Now it's just go BPA, whoever's available. Mike, you, you kind of see now with the offseason, the free agency period, wrapping up a little bit over the last couple of days. We'll see what more moves the Lions can make. Carlton Davis, they traded for him. They acquired him corner from Tampa. Bigger. He can guard number one receivers. He's been a little nicked up through his career. He's never played a full season, but still he's not. I wouldn't say he's he's a, you know, uh, a big injury concern. Like he's going to miss a lot of games. But what, what are your thoughts on them kind of revamping the corner room? They brought in Amik Robertson. What's your thoughts on the corner, the corner room from last year to this year and how much it's upgraded? I am happy that they revamped this bad boy because that corner room last year was booty cheeks. It was awful. People were getting blown out left and right. And I know, especially with Carlton Davis, Emmanuel Mosley, we're looking at well, there's injury concerns. And I do have concerns about that as well. But the talent level of the players that they got, I do think, is better than what we had last year. And I truly do believe they'll they'll get a cornerback in this year's draft. That's probably going to be end up being their number one once he's developed at some point. Remember, they, they get their cornerstones through the draft. It's not going to be through free agency that they're going to make their staple for, for any part of this football team. Yeah, agreed. Um, also here, real quick, other side of the ball, Mike. 
talked about this yesterday. We actually had a pretty good conversation. I felt like yesterday on our show about this, but uh, the whole Josh Reynolds saga uh, with him hasn't resigned yet. We're, we're sitting here kind of waiting what's going to happen. We spoke yesterday about how we kind of probably just kind of getting a feel on the market of what he's worth and, and kind of wants to just feel that out a little bit. Um, would you want to bring Josh Reynolds back on like a little bigger, like it's probably going to have to be a bigger deal than la the last two years. Um, or would you rather just say, let's, Hey, let's just get someone in the second round. Let's get another weapon to add to this offense for um, Jared Goff and Ben Johnson here. Yeah. The wide receiver market's a little bit slow right now in free agency. And I'm sure Josh Reynolds is trying to feel his worth as well as the lines are letting him feel his worth. So they don't overspend. I like Josh Reynolds. I may be minute on this, but given that he got 600 yards this season. It was a lot of crucial downs that he got these big yards in. Besides the NFC Championship game, I feel like he really can help this offense out as a number four slash five wide receiver. Of course, we're all going to look at the NFC Championship where he dropped those balls and really hate on him. But if you look at his tenure as a Detroit Lion, he's done fairly well, given the circumstances. So if we can bring him back, I would like that. His chemistry with Goff is right then and there. We don't need to wait for development of a wide receiver. They can get from game one and, and just start kind of where they're at. Now, if they don't bring him back, it's probably due to financial. And I, I prefer if they were to get a wide receiver, maybe a little bit later in the draft. I think second round, you could still get some defense or a guard, something a little more pressing. Because if you look at the wide receivers right now, you got St. Brown and you got Jamison Williams, you got Khalif Raymond, you, uh, Sam Laporta, the tight end, gets a lot of targets. So if you're to draft a guy significantly high in the draft, he's probably not going to get that many targets warranting where he goes in the draft. But if look, if they get a wide receiver early, I'm a, I'm a Brad Holmes guy. You know, I, I, I say in Brad Holmes, we trust. That's how I've been in this free agency. Let's go. And, that, and that's the way it should be, folks. And, and all these yeah. people ripping on Brad Holmes and Mike Valenti saying it's arrogant. Folks, this guy has turned this franchise around in three years from one of the worst rosters ever to a very good young roster, seventh best cap in the NFL. Kudos to Brad Holmes for what he's doing. And it, Lucas, Wait, real quick, I'm going to wanna... switch, switch up the tempo just a second, Mike, because I do love what Brad's doing. But one thing I won't say that I hate it, but I'm definitely questioning is the Marcus Davenport signing. Now, I'm not saying I, I think he sucks or anything like that. I think he's going to be a depth piece. But I just think one year, six and a half million. He had two sacks last year. And then in the year prior to that, New Orleans, 15 games, half a sack. So what do you think it is that he sees in Marcus Davenport? And when it comes down to it, what do you expect from him when the season kicks off? You know, look, we could always question some of the moves and the free agent moves that he makes, and that's perfectly fine. That's what we're supposed to do, right? And Marcus Davenport is not a guy who you think is going to be a staple that's going to come in here and be Aiden Hutchinson. I, when I seen that, I was kind of with you, like, eh, we got to see what they're going to do. And my, my expectation is, is they're going to get a guy in the draft. And so probably what they see in Davenport is someone familiar with Aaron Glenn's defense, New Orleans Saints. He got injured in Minnesota, so maybe they can bring that better part of him out that he's with New Orleans with. Uh, with you, it's a little sketch. It's a little sketch because you bring in all these injured players throughout the years. A lot of the, a lot of the time, it doesn't really work out. But look, they're doing a one-year flyer. It's a one-year deal. If it doesn't work out, oh, well, it's a one-year deal. If it works out, great. So that's what I'm going with it. I'm not saying that Brad Holmes deserve no criticism whatsoever that's utterly ridiculous he definitely deserves criticism i deserve criticism but to jump off the brad brad holmes bandwagon and just say this guy's a bum and all this and that it's just it's ludicrous but yeah with you davenport i would like to see a better edge rusher in there hopefully we get one here in free agency and maybe in the draft as well and mike a lot of the nfc teams made some moves this weekend i just kind of want to get where you're at on that and how do the lions match up with teams like the eagles the 49ers now that they've made some moves Eagles made some moves, Mike. Yeah, the Eagles made some moves. They got CJ Gardner face mask. So, look, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, some teams made some moves, and that's okay. Um, it doesn't really matter what happens in March. I want to see what happens actually when the game time takes place. You know, you could be great in free agency, right? We had the dream team like the Eagles. What is it, like 15 years ago? They had Omni Awesome One. They had all these players end up being a bust. Yeah. So I kind of want to wait a little bit to see what actually happens with these players that other teams sign. So when it comes to the NFC North, clearly they're taking a note out of the Detroit Lions. They want to run the football. 
because the Lions were very good stopping the run, and they want to stop the run, and that's the adjustments you're seeing in the NFC North. And it's great to see how other teams are adjusting around what the Lions are doing instead of the other way around. It's great. So they get Josh Jacobs. They get all these running backs. We'll get a DJ reader. So it's just like that moment in the Avengers where Iron Man says, well, we have a Hulk. So that, that that's what's going on here. And the guy is like a Hulk, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, no question about it. Mike, also what happened the day before, I mean, the DJ Reader news kind of took over, and that's really all that mattered. But, you know, early on in the day, Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes were extended through 2027. Uh, it was announced Sheila Ford had some nice things to say. Uh, what does this mean? I mean, you, you look back, and Jeremy Reisman put this out. The last time the Lions gave a head coach an extension, it was Jim Caldwell in 2017, and, we, and he was fired months later. The last time they gave a GM an extension, it was Bob Quinn, and he was fired two years oh, later. Yeah. So how significant is it, uh, M Mike, that, again, you got Brad and Dan, the, the kind of chemistry they have, they're extended for a couple more years now. Yeah, well, Bob Quinn hired Matt Patricia, so that pretty much doomed okay. his his mm -hmm. job right there. And then drafting Jeffrey Akuda really didn't help uh, for those two. And then and Matt Patricia is just an absolute clown. Uh, I, I'm happy that these guys got extended. I love these guys. And Spielman got extended as well, four year deal. So Shout look, when you have when you have all the chefs, the Holy Trinity right now for the Lions leadership in Spielman, Brad Holmes, and Dan Campbell. That's a good thing. They got extended because they're awesome at what they do they're not yep. perfect they're awesome and you know i well deserve for all those guys and again if there's criticism towards that uh i that at that point it's just click clicking for views or something because these guys deserve the extension when you have a general manager that is basically gm of the year and you have a head coach that potentially could have been head coach of the year yeah you're doing pretty good you're doing pretty good extend these guys yeah i mean it's it's crazy i mean i saw that um, immediately and i'm like you know what this is foreign to me, Mike, and it's foreign to most Lions fans. Like typically, especially like I just brought up Bob Quinn, Jim Caldwell, the last two that were extended and they were fired shortly after. I mean, it, it kind of just shows what the Lions are building. I mean, some would say we had to go through some of those comments the last couple of days talking about Brad Holmes and the moves he's made. And, and people are already saying not I don't want to say completely out on Brad Holmes, but it's been like, yeah, Brad. Yeah, I don't know, guys. He, he's he's kind of fumbling this for agency. I can't believe we've gotten to that point, Mike. Like I, I, I'm, I'm surprised it's been this bad. Like especially coming off the NFC Championship game and how the line. I get there's questions, Mike, but damn. For I don't know what you had to deal with, kind of doing your content and, and how Lions fans have been, but not everybody. I know most of the chat's been okay, but there's a couple, Mike, that are overreacting like terribly. I seen the comments. I'm like, oh my god, am I just like a complete homer here? Like, am I that like not upset with what's going on? Like, holy cow, folks. They said the same thing about Brad Holmes' draft last year. And look how that worked out. Oh, this is the worst draft of all time. This Jameer Gibbs, you don't take a running back at 12. Jack Campbell, exactly. pff, look at this guy. Brian Branch, okay, that's good, but a, a tight end. Yeah, you three of these guys probably – like all pro like <laughs> so yeah everybody criticizes it especially a lot of people in the media they want to criticize brad holmes sit back folks understand that building a roster is through the draft okay that is where you're getting your main parts of this football team Panay Sewell, aiden hutchinson amon ross st brown the, the the list goes on that is the staples and free agency is not going to be the staple it is rare to find a Golden Tater or Glover Quinn. But what you want to do is you get compliment pieces in free agency. And that's what they have done. And guess what? If, if a guy does well, you can extend him. If he stinks, well, it's a right. one-year deal. Let him walk anyway. So I, I cannot understand the ideas of people saying it's time to fire Brad Holmes and he doesn't know what he's doing and all this crazy <laughs> stuff. The guy's proven it. What, what else can he do? I really don't understand what Brad Holmes or Dan Campbell possibly could do at this point to deserve the criticism and the backlash that they get for free agency every single year. Well, Mike, I, we're going to get to uh, just two member questions here. I like to do this. Uh, people are going to ask two questions and we'll, we'll get you out of here. ETN will start us off. Uh, he says, question, top five biggest threats to the Lions in the NFC. What do you think, Mike? Top five NFC threat, the biggest threats. Oh, San Francisco 49ers, they're going to be up there for sure. Obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles, I think they'll be better. They got some yeah. new coaches over there for sure. Dallas Cowboys, they're still going to be good. I know we all hate these guys, but they're still going to be good. The Green Bay Packers in there, and how about the Atlanta Falcons? 
They mm. have had a great mm. offseason right now. And getting Rondale Moore, trading their Desmond Ritter for Rondale Moore is a nice little sneaky. B. John Robinson, Rondale Moore, Drake London, Kirk Cousins. That team is is is, is an under the radar team right there. Uh, was that four or five? I, I don't even five. know. Five. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Next next question we got, uh, and it's from Steve. And I it, I'm kind of curious in terms of addressing the kicker <laughs> position, Mike. You think they'll do it in the draft, or you think they they maybe sign a kicker in free agency? I think they're just going to go in the draft, sixth or seventh round pick, and and get yourself a kicker right there. Brad Holmes made it clear that they're going to get competition to the kicker room right there. And guess what? They haven't signed anybody. And a lot of people on the street is not really the long-term uh, solution. Right. Cody, they can go ahead and get this guy, seventh round pick, and that could be your starter potentially for a long time unless he Nate freezes. But that's the best <laughs> way for me, right? Just get a guy in the draft and let him compete. Yeah, no doubt. We appreciate that. you, Mike. Thank you for taking the time, man. You no guys problem, can check bro. out Mike Love's channel. Appreciate you, Mike. Mike, check him out. we'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. All right, peace, man. Go Lions and peace, uh, go win the Super Bowl. I'm telling you. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Super oh, season. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, go, Mike. Mike. <laughs> I can get with that, Mike. There you go. Micro Mike uh, crushing it as oh, always. Legend, uh, man. Go! Yeah, the, yeah, the actual go. I do want to get to the Marcus Davenport stuff in a little bit here. Uh, because again, I, but before we get to that, I, I do want to bring up the fact that Brad and Dan were both extended. I kind of want your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, I have Sheila's quote. I want to read she, what she kind of said. Uh, she said, uh, "Quote: We are thrilled to have Brad and Dan under contract for the next four seasons. They have been the driving force behind behind the rebuild of our football team and the success that we've enjoyed." And you know what, Sheila, you're being you're being too modest because Sheila deserves a lot of credit too. She because does. again. She's letting the guys that know football stick to football, and that's mm -hmm. what matters. Uh, she's a she's that's the type of owner I prefer, at least uh, that'll cut the check and step away when they need to. Chris Spielman also ex ex extended, and like I brought up, the last head coach. This is Jeremy Reisman put this. I got to credit him. Jim Caldwell. He's fired two months later. Last GM that was extended, Bob Quinn. He was fired two years later. Guys, oh. how significant is this? Getting these guys an extension. I did massive it's like literally like this culture has been built the last two or three years like we talk about all of that and i saw there's a drinking game in, in the chat that anytime i say booner path take a shot so booner path baby take a shot because this is literally <laughs> the culture all of that like what they have built the last two or three years there's always this question too and this this has come up the last 12 months it's a hey, who's been more important to this um this turnaround brad holmes dan campbell or sheila hamp Guess what? We have all three of them, so it really doesn't matter. And Sheila just kept two of them for a very, very long time, for at least the next four more years or whatever it is. So, like, Brad is so good at, at evaluating talent, finding guys, not even just that, but also finding the right guys that fit the culture that Dan Campbell has came in and built with that whole grit mentality and the guys. Like, they are spot on with what they wanted to build. And when you have – and I think everyone agrees with me on this – in the NFL, it's so hard to find like a culture in any sport, like any any company, anything you have. It's hard to like get a culture to where it's like a winning culture consistently. And it's like contagious and guys want to come in and be in there. And like when that comes around, especially in a league like this, you have to hang on to that and you have to build off that. And, and it's like you see head coaches all the time just rotate and GMs rotate, rotate. You have actually like some legit guys in the building now. The fact that Sheila's able to say, okay, I'm, I noticed this and I noticed what we have. We're not letting this go for a very long time. Like, we're going to let these guys just build and build and build. So I, I, I love it. Um, and also, too, I don't know if you guys saw, Chris Spielman got extended as well. And I think that's another, like, big-time piece. Like, Chris Spielman's a huge, huge um, piece here for this Detroit Lions team, the front office, and kind of what they're building as well. So that's also a massive deal. Um, it, it, culture, fellas. Culture. Yeah. <laughs> culture. No question. No, it, it speaks volumes to uh, the culture that the, these two have built. And when you have a GM and a coach that really see eye to eye on like everything, that's like so huge because you can look around the league and when that relationship really doesn't mess, it could really boil down to your team and it could just be a shit show. So these two really deserved anything. They could have gotten a blank check from me. That would have been fine. But it really speaks volumes to what these two have been building. And uh, the Lions are in great hands. Couldn't be more excited. Yeah, I mean, you guys said it well. The only thing I got to say is that window, you know, it's been extended. Everybody's talking about, well, how long yep. is the line window? You got to at least 2027. 20, so you got three, four seasons at least of good football guaranteed. So I'm all for it. Yeah, and, and it's kind of to what Booner said. Like, it, it's just not common. Like, look at the Panthers. Look at how many head coaches 
that Temper's been through. I mean, it's if you're a well-run organization, you you give me a well-run organization, I'll find you consistency. I'll find you professionalism. Like it, it, it's just like the 49ers. Lynch and Shanahan, right? You go to the the Rams, McVay and Les Snead. Go to the Chiefs. I mean, Andy Reid and of course Brett Veach. Like you can keep going. Um, and of course, there will be changes when it's necessary, but it's not like these good organizations, these you know respected organizations are bringing in a new head coach every other year. I mean, it's just it's not typically what happens. The Lions were that. You know, it was constantly testing. Is this guy going to work? Is this guy going to work? What about this guy? Is this guy going to work? I'm not Patricia. Maybe, maybe we'll steal someone from the Patriots. We'll, it's a little cheat code. Maybe we'll get the Patriots culture. But this is a real thing, boys. Yeah, you're getting consistency. Hey, you're getting you're getting consistency. What it shows too, and, and this is a thing, and and a lot of people are doing this, and there's a lot of people around the city that, um, you know, talk Lions football and everything, and and I just see so many people preaching like it's an all in year, like you, the window is so small, like Lucas said, like that window just extended to 2027, like this shows that like they don't look at it as you have to go win the Super Bowl this year or you're done, like it's that, like no, they look at it to like, hey, we're like that dynasty word, like what the. I, when I say this, guys, again, like you guys hit the real, like I understand you have to get to the Super Bowl first and get it done. Like I understand that, but like they're looking to do that. Like they're looking to, to literally do this for a very long time. Like they're not just looking to go all in on the Jarius Need and Daniil Hunter to say let's just get this done next year. No, they want to get it done next year and then they want to keep doing it. Sheila doing that, sh- like the from the top down, like she it, she knows that she wants multiple Super Bowls. You you're the only way you have a chance of doing that is with these two guys. And well, shout out, shout, shout out, out to sort of uh, some people, uh, especially we got one certified uh, supply chain professional gifting one crunch membership uh, to uh, out, really Let's appreciate you that. Yep, that was clutch. You're certified. We also have a gift here from Eduardo. Thank you for the five dollars says I will be the leader of Hutch for defensive player of the year 2024 campaign. Can I get the crunch time slash Booner bad slash Gentry approval slash endorsement? Okay. I'm in. I'll let, I'll let yeah. the Michigan man, the Michigan men, you guys can cut here. On the Booner path, as you're walking down the Booner path, you know, like those campaign signs, <laughs> it literally says Hutch for DPO.Y 2024. We will get Open a shirt this door. When, we get our, when we get our, yeah, when we get our shirt, our, our, our merch going, that will be a shirt. And we actually, you know what we might do, fellas? I want to do this. I'm going to do them. I have another merch idea. It's not really a merch. We're going to sell those signs. Like at schools, how they sell the signs with like. <laughs> Snow like coming court, court. 2024. We're That's getting political idea, signs bro. that say Hutch 2024 defensive player of the year on it, and we're gonna get that. Fuck yeah. Can, no, can they got get the approval? Approval? Let's fucking go. Let's, <laughs> Let's <laughs> fucking go. Mike, Mike's like, I'll let the let the play do the talking. He's gonna yeah. I mean okay, let's real quick before we move on, we'll get to Davenport. How many how many sacks for Hutch? What's like the, 17. you know how you check the uh, you know how you check the the odds it moves up? What did it move up now that you got DJ Reader? Uh, what are we, 17. What are we thinking? I don't it's, hate it, but it's 17. The line is 16 and a half and it's going over. He's getting 17. It's really it's 16, 16 and, and a half. half right now? In my in, in, in the Booner sports book, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you had me the there Booner for a minute. <laughs> I was going to say at least 15. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say fifteen. I think sixteen, 15, and it depends on if they four. go and get a. It can go up. I'm gonna say sixteen, but if they go and if they, if they pull out of the Lucas playbook and they trade up for a lot two or for a verse, I, it could go up to you talk about seventeen, eighteen, because you got Aleem Reader and another guy that can get to the quarterback. That's gonna create more opportunities for Hutch. So I'll go. I'll go Let's sixteen. Not, I'm I'm gonna say this is as non disrespectful as possible or anything like that. Aiden Hutchinson, in my opinion, is better than Trey Hendrickson. Trey Hendrickson yeah. just had 17 with DJ Reader helping kind of put, fill the middle up there. Aiden okay. Hutchinson with the Lee McNeil, Troy, and, and Lee McNeil, DJ Reader, and then they're probably going to add another edge, whether it's in the draft or free agency. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's going to – like, again, I, I'm, I'm going to sound very repetitive all offseason on this, and I know we all hate PFF numbers. I think we agree we're not a big fan of them, but we will use them when they fit our narrative. And if it's my narrative right now and <laughs> the – the quarterback PFF, hits, bro. the pressures, all of those pressures and stuff. If he does that next year, he's going to get to 17 sacks because he has other guys getting double teamed and taking up space and winning one on ones. 16 and a half, up give me the over. Too, but I don't even know if like the sports books will put his line that high because if you guys remember to last year, like, I mean, obviously the Lions gained a lot more respect going to the NFC Championship this year and Hutch showed out in the playoffs, but like, 
there was still some really low lines for the Lions starting off of last year. Like David Montgomery was like seven and a half touchdowns for the longest time. So I think they'll probably put Hutch around like 13 and a half, 14 and a half. But either yeah, way, yeah. I think he hits the over. Hey, like this comment of Canadian hope. Algado, we got the great Canadian hope, Matthew. Matthew Betts, Betts baby. <laughs> he, I know we poke fun, but like, who knows? I, I, watch, who knows? Matthew. Betts. Can you imagine that's like, oh, like that's I don't know who Matthew Betts. Than Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round. It's Matthew Betts out of the CFL. He's the Warren <laughs> Moon at the defensive hey, end. Quantes, oh, Quantes Stigger as well. He's twenty-two. A CFL didn't even go to co- didn't even play college ball. He 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 enrolled. Yeah, next, and then- hey, stop next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real, real quick, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um, <laughs> when you guys said Matthew Betts, you guys could tell that I've just been uh, just gambling uh, March Madness all day long because first thing in my head, I'm like. Matthew Betts, like, does he put his picks out on Twitter? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> I forgot he was the edge rusher from the Canadian Football League. I'm like sitting there, like, man, you guys have a betting guy? Like, you guys have yeah, a guy well, giving hey. out winners, and you guys aren't giving me the winners? What are we doing here? Boys? Hey, he might, he might make you a lot of bread. You betting team total sacks and bets counts for two of them, three of them. I bet <laughs> he made a lot of money this year. Levi. Sack. No, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Betts. Well, speaking of uh, having, you know, liking PFF only when it fits your narrative. Uh, I <laughs> it did fit my narrative a little bit, boys, when I brought up some stats on Marcus Davenport. Ooh. And real quick, before we before we get into that, all right, I, I want to say this: Marcus Davenport, Lions signed up. It's a one year flyer. I think we can all sit here and admit it wasn't sexy. It's not Daniil Hunter by any means. And I not get that, but here's where you have to listen, okay? And and Booner actually said this already. And he he, you know, when Davenport was first signed, Boone was like, "All right, fellas." Who knows? Davenport might be, he might have a little something to give. Like, you know, he saw what he did in 2021. So I went ahead and looked back, did some research, and I just want to ask a question. Okay. And I want you guys to tell me if I'm out of line here. Okay. And if this tweet was out of line, because I'm a, I'm, I'm here for accountability. That's why I have the fellas. That's why I have the chat. I put this out. If Marcus Davenport can get back to his form in 2021 and stay relatively healthy, he can easily be a steal for the Detroit Lions. In 11 games in 2021, he had nine sacks, three forced fumbles, 42 QB pressures, and 27 quarterback hurries. In 17 games this past season, Aiden Hutchinson had 11 and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, 101 QB pressures, and 62 QB hurries. Terrell Williams can take this man's game up another level. Now, what I meant, and I think the big, the big if here, I will say this, is the health concerns. Like, I, I get that. If that's your response, I can, honestly, I can't really say much. But, fellas, 11 games, nine sacks. I mean, if you finish the entire – I know if, it's always if. And that's what I – it sucks because you got to play the if game. But if you kind of measure that through a majority of a season, the dude's got potential. I know the press conference was a little cringy by depending on who you ask. But he's he's a he's a big man. And he, he showed flashes early on in his career. Boys, was, was that tweet out of line? Out of pocket or, or just right? Tell me right yeah, now. You guys cook on this. I'm, I'm, I'll follow can up I, after you. Can, can I just be honest? I, I, yeah, I hey. love the enthusiasm, Jeff. But you want to look at that, and I'm not saying you. I'm saying anybody. Okay. If you want to go back and look at that nine-sack season, 11 games, you can. But then flash back and look at who was on that Saints defense. Cameron Jordan was in his prime. Demario Davis was in his prime. They had C.J. Gardner-Johnson there. Marshawn Lattimore was emerging. And then you look at the season after that, half a sack. The season after that, we'll go through it. Besides that nine sack season, rookie year, four and a half sacks, second year, six sacks, no improvement. You think so? The following year, one, one and a half sack, nine sacks, half a sack, two sacks. There's, I just don't see, I see the depth reason, but I just don't think people should be getting their hypes up as this is a guy that's Brad's going to turn around and turn around, turn around. Cause he's been in some good situations, especially when you look at the edge rushers that are across from him and he's really had one year. So to expect that one year to come out of him. Is it possible? Yes. Do I think it is likely? No. I just I think that six and a half million dollars could have been spent elsewhere. That's just my thing. I I love Brad, but I just don't love this player at all. Yeah, no, and I agree with Lucas as far as the money goes. You probably could have spent it elsewhere and got someone else. But like Jeff, I think you're you're totally spot on being optimistic and what Terrell Williams can bring out of him. And I still think he can be the perfect rotational piece with obviously James Houston coming in. Uh I don't know how much we expect for him as far as sacks goes, but I just think he can be a guy, you know, a violent edge rusher to come in every once in a while and mix in there with James Houston. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with being optimistic at 
him possibly having a bounce back year. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, and, and the, I'm not saying he's Aiden Hutchinson, but I wanted to put in perspective. Like, here's the Lions' best edge, what he did, yeah. and Davenport's best season. I get it was in 2021. I get I, I'm reaching a little bit here. I get you what you're saying, Trutella, in the chat. I, I get it. Like, I am reaching, but I'm kind of asking a question here. Like, I, I listen, I, I get you can say you're reaching, <laughs> but he talked about it in the press conference. I think the word that the reporter can't remember who it was. I'm sorry for that. They he he brought up that you basically rebuilt yourself, like with all these injury, you know, injuries that have occurred. And he said, like he's had to have a lot of surgery, so he used the term like you almost rebuilt yourself. And he's like, yeah, I would I would agree with that. He says it's one of the first off seasons I've been able to go into an off season healthy. So again, can he stay healthy? I think I I think the question I would ask is how many snaps is he playing? If you yeah. can get them on a smaller sample size, maybe get them out there and, and don't use them to, you know, overwork them because he is fragile when you look at his games played. I get that. But, like, I think Davenport, man, I think he's got something oh. to give, Lucas. I think oh. he's not saying he's going to come out and get 9, 10, 11 sacks, but, like, who who was the, who was the second leading um, uh, sack getter on the Lions? What was that? Ali. Lee McNeil? Ali. Yeah, Ali. he was hurt. What, can I, can I defend you here, Jeff? Five or something like that. I mean, come on. He can do five and a half, six. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Uh, what's I, up, dude? I, I just want to defend you a little bit here because I, I I talked about this when we signed him the day after we signed him. I brought the stats up. I I said, hey, listen, the health, all of that. I I'm 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 gonna defend you on this side of things. He he's not gonna be like your your a one starter on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. Like I don't think that's what you're saying. And and when I kind of went over that and I, I broke it down as well, that's not where I was kind of going to saying, hey, that's your bookend. That's the guy that you didn't go after Daniel Hunter. You went after Marcus Davenport with. And and like to me, I see a lot of people in the chat be like, oh yeah, but the depth is good. That's where I I feel like you're going with this, Jeff, is like the depth and, and kind of make doing a full makeover on this defensive line. I, I do believe this. I, I I do believe that if he is healthy, and and that again, it's an if. He is a very very, he he's a very very good depth piece for you, and that's where I'm going to keep going with this. It's just like if he stays healthy, like two sacks, four games, nine sacks, eleven games, six sacks, thirteen games. If he plays in thirteen plus games and stays healthy, and he can go out there and get you six plus sacks, as that's not even your your second best edge rusher, that's very very good to me. Like, that is a very good depth piece, a secondary piece that's rotating in. And I think that's all it is. Like, we have to be honest. Like, every guy you sign isn't going to be a star. But how can he provide any sort of um, just – how can he provide anything on your football team? And he's going to be able to pr provide something. When he was healthy in games, he got sacks, and he got the job done and got to the quarterback. And, like, he mentioned in his press conference today, I'm about violence and being physical. And that was something all season long last year with the Detroit Lions that we were sitting there and we were like – and what's going on over there, Lucas? Is the no. comment. The co <laughs> this comment, but what do you think about that? If Davenport gives know. us prune juice, Bruce Irvin production for 12 games. No, it, you're good. You're good. I, I We were just – I, I didn't mean – I, I didn't try to laugh. It just made me laugh. Yeah, you yeah. boys, I got ADHD over here. The comments flying up. I'm trying to read the comments flying up and cook at the same time. I <laughs> no, can't no, do that. Not, your, hey, your job is to cook. Don't read those comments. Keep I cooking. I try and cook. I shut the chat off, and now I've got comments popping up here, boys. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a squirrel out here sometimes. I, I get distracted. <laughs> Jeez. But, Boone, you're right. I mean, I, in, I, Lucas, like you're dis depth. You, it's you depth. disagree. Yeah, and I agree. I, uh, Lucas, I know you, you're giving us that. Giving us that stank face. I get it. Like, I, I just, I, 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 what? I don't just even think know if ceiling, also, though. just real quick, Doug, or go, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, we also don't even know if Brad Holmes goes out and grabs another edge and like what the future oh. actually holds for Davenport and how much of a rot rotational piece he actually is going to be. So, like, as much as we want to be optimistic, we really don't even know what we got. We kind of got to wait and see. So, I just think, and as much as I dislike him, as a player, I just think he needs to he just needs to do that Romeo Quarrel. He just needs to go out there and at the end of the season, if he has two or three sacks, I'll be a happy camper. But I could be if I'm being very honest, I'd see a situation where he gets hurt week four, week five, defensive end that they draft, James Houston starts getting more in the rotation. He's just completely washed out. I think that's the case it'll be. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But I just I don't think he's gonna be a guy for the Lions. I just don't. Well, here's this. I thought this was interesting. Uh, look, look at this. Lions put this out. I know they're going to hype up their guys, right? But and and the the thing is, I thought this was um this was this was interesting, right? He, it, they wrote here and some stats on Davenport. 
The first one they wrote has appeared in 67 career games, 35 starts, and has totaled 149 tackles, 64 quarterback hits, 27 tackle for losses, 23 and a half sacks, seven forced fumbles, four pass deflections, and one fumble recovery. They write, among all NFL edge rushers with at least 125 pass rushes in 2021, he tied for the fourth highest win percentage, 18.3% per PFF. They also write, among all NFL edge rushers with at least 125 pass rushes in 2021, he tied for the 10th highest uh, pressure percentage, 9.1% per PFF. So again, like the question is, are you getting that 2021 season? Which like could easily be no, but like there is a little bit of that upside, which is why you give him a one year deal. And that's not, now he's not going to be the the de facto guy on the edge, on the other side of Hutch. Like, right. You got Houston, you got Pascal, like they're going to have a rotation, but like all I'm saying is, and I'm not, I'm not making the case that Davenport's going to be this complete 10 plus sack guy. But what I am saying is when I think people, this isn't that Lucas, I've seen it like kind of dismissing the signing. Like it's just uh, nothing. Like I, I think Davenport can, to, if he, again, given he stays healthy, um, which is a big, if I get that, I think he's going to, he's going to sh- prove some people wrong out there. Two things real quick. First thing, fun fact, fellas, your second best edge rusher isn't even on your football team right now. Kind of like Gentry said. Your second best edge rusher, he's sitting in free agency or sitting in the draft right now. That's just, to me, that's almost a fact. That's where I'm at with it. Obviously, James Houston, if he comes back and he did what he did last year, then he might be that guy. But right now, in my opinion, that guy, he's not even on the team right now. I, and, and I'll kind of die on that hill. Secondly, Jeff, to your point of, of people just dismissing the guy. And, and Lucas, this is just me, like, like just conversations we've just had. Just say it. And, just and, say it. And, and, Say it and with your fans, chest. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, and fans have had, like, a guy like Commission stuff, like, as bad as he played last year, everyone is missing Commish. And us as a show, we've had conversations about, and we put him in our prep about, hey, should we cut commit the Commish? And people on Twitter, should we cut the Commish? It's like he was in a role he shouldn't have been in last year. But when he's in that depth piece and he's in that role, he excels in that role. That doesn't mean just because a guy's a, a role player doesn't mean you just dis- dismiss a role player because he's not a star. Like, that's where it feels like some of these guys, when we sign people or we do moves like this or we make trades, it's like, oh, he's not a star? We didn't just get an all-pro player? We didn't get a pro bowler? Ah, he's nothing. He's trash. He can't do anything. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, what are you talking about? Every team and every sport has role players. Let that man be a role player. He's had nine sacks in a ga- in a season in 11 games, and he's going to be one of your role players. And if he stays healthy, that's an elite role player. I almost I, I I told Lucas yesterday we we had a kind of one-on-one conversation after the show. Don't you do it? Him, Don't you do it? Him, Don't you I told do him I was going to call him buddy one of these shows. I was like the first show in our life that we ever do if we're ever on like an ESPN or a Fox or something. I was like the very first live show we do on a national media. <laughs> I'm going to hit you with the buddy. And he you was like, dude, I'll jump on live TV. I almost said it right there just because it popped TV. in my head. Our our conversation it popped in our head, and I was like. I was like, it, it almost came out. And I was like, I have to save it for our first big show, our first live show. What are you, you going to, Will hey, Smith? All I gotta, hey, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't a, have problems I would, with Meek Robertson. I would take I don't have problems with Meek Robertson. Great role player. I think he's perfect. He's an elite, as you would say, an elite role player at CB. Marcus Dav- Davenport, if he is healthy and he's playing like he has in the games he's been healthy, that is a pretty good role player. You don't need 100 snaps out of him. You just need yeah, limited just, snaps. And, and 125 and pass rushing snaps. I'd I'd expect I'd want a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. A little bit more production. Yeah, I, no, because you're gonna draft a guy. You have Aiden Hutchinson, you have James Houston. You have you guys. draft the guy, but you know, they, they love throwing Charles Harris out there, and he was a big nut. They're gonna throw Marcus can we just get a out bunch there of, for a lot of snaps, and I'm worried can we about just get it. a bunch of buddies in the chat. Everyone just drop buddy in the chat. Just buddy. <laughs> no, <to be> <laughs> Don't you I'm dare. still really optimistic Don't about Davenport, and I'm not dismissing him as being a rotational player whatsoever, but like putting up stats from 2021, I could give a shit less. <laughs> That, yeah, means, that is 2021. Like, come on. Like, you got to do we're, better, we're than, better than that. We're like, in 2024. Yeah, that is three years ago. So, like, you got to figure right. that out. I'm still optimistic he'll be a fine rotational player to come in, you know, mix in with James Houston. But I don't give a shit about 2021. Well, I, I think it. What, I hope I can't wait till he has a sack. I'm going to look at both of you guys and I'm going to stream I said a sack two or three right sacks, in your guys' face. A happy camper. I think he I can get wait. a sack. You ain't getting no fucking nine or even six for that matter. No, because he's not a star. He's going to be a role player. Like he doesn't, you don't need player. nine. An elite don't role need player. Nine. <laughs> Juwan Jennings is an elite role player. If he gets three this year, we're, we're making a bet. If he gets three, dude, I, you owe me like dinner or something. 
Germ is an elite role player. Marcus I think, Davenport ain't no Germ. Well, I mean, you could say the last time Davenport had a breakout season, Brady won a Super Bowl. So, like, I, you know, I get that. Like, I, you know what? I, I, I oh, so Jeff that. flips sides on us now. No, no, I'm just saying that. <laughs> that say, was like, quick. No, it's not flipping Welcome, sides. Jeff. It's just stating the fact. Like, I get it. Like, me and Boone don't have a a huge hill to, like, sit here and be like, you're wrong. Like, I get that the, the health questions are fair. But what well, me and Booner, I think me and Booner would agree on this. Like the, I just like we like the upside. You know what I mean? Like there's there's some upside there. I think with Davenport, given he stays healthy, you know what I mean. That's what I'm trying to make the argument for. And he had very now. Uh, you know, what? I'm gonna ask you this, Lucas. Okay. <laughs> is he better? Is he better than Romeo Okora? No. You won't even give him that. No, I, I said. I, 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 hey, if we if we look at look at the last couple of years. So I'm saying, and even look at well, this. Well, I, I should say when look health, at, I mean, when healthy, I guess. You know, I, and I, you, I just, you look at if Romeo were to resign, I, I think he takes less than six and a half. And I even said, if you were to take off Romeo Aquara from this, I said this when we first signed him and put in Marcus Davenport during the season, you could argue that the Lions defensive line would have gotten worse. Okay. I, the, like you, well, let me ask you, we clowned. Mark, we called Marcus Davenport half a sack, Jeff, on the on, on our previous employee. We clowned him. <laughs> if we would have traded for Marcus Davenport in the middle of the season last year at the trade deadline, we would have been irate. Irate. So okay. I'm just all I'm doing is I'm keeping that same energy. It's all I'm doing. Do you know what's well, funny? Do you know what's Jeff funny? I didn't want you to bring that up. Guess, <laughs> guess what? Let me address guess what? the allegations. Can I address the allegations? Can I address the allegations, Boo? Yeah, go ahead. Real quick, because he just he just called me out there. Um <laughs> We both did it, though. We both so, did it. Well, you know what? It's fair. I did do that. But with time, <laughs> with maturity, you know, I, opinions, they develop, you know? Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. it's like you plant a tree. A couple years later, tree looks a little different. I, 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 how, I, how I looked, how I thought of it, I try to look at it from a different perspective. That's okay. Now, That's now, like I said, the argument about the injuries – I got nothing because that's kind this of what we went after him about. We're like half a sack. Are you serious? Like, what are we doing here? This is where I'm um, going to go with it. God damn it, Jeff. <laughs> 16 games last year for Ro- – or was it 16 games for Romeo Okora last year? Two sacks. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I don't <laughs> 16 know. games, two sacks. Marcus Davenport, if I'm looking at my notes here right, my, my, my notebook over here, four games – in two sacks. Now, I'm not saying it's like a, oh, he's a, g- way better than Rome. No. But guess what? He played in four games and had the same amount of sna- sacks as Romeo Cora did in 16 football games. I don't and care what you're saying. That, you think. I don't care about the year before. We're talking about last year. I don't care what you're talking. We're, we're talking about right now. Guess what? Right now, games. he had the same amount of sacks in how many less games? Like, 12 more games and he had the same like no i'm not doing we're not having that the conversation best, the best we're not having that conversation i want my players healthy i don't want my players before games. we're not having that dude simple. he's gonna have Fair. the same amount of sacks as romeo cora did in 16 games for us yeah but one's healthier so which one would you take uh, dude romeo's not giving you anything he's just out there not even I he disagree. can't do you remember that one great, you remember that? great no. locker room presence you're, great oh, locker room sh- presence His get out of here with there. that stuff it's a great situation do you remember? Do you remember that one snap? And I remember this when we were we were watching it. We were doing a stream, and I remember a Romeo Cora pass rush, and he like ran up the field and stopped and watched the quarterback. Like he was like a fan in the first row and was like, "Oh my gosh, look at that!" Guy That's almost football. like what Marcus Don't Davenport need that. does on the sideline with the boot on. We can Please, move out. Oh, on the field. Well, stop acting well, like he, we just signed a superstar and treating Davenport like an all pro pass. No, rusher. no, I'm just he, he's, that's what you're doing. I, I just don't think he's that elite role player. I think he's a meh yeah. role player. We don't, he, he's not, he's a normal role player. Yeah, well, we had like, Romeo Cora. We, we were, we, we gave Romeo Cora like, every you, chance. You, you, Romeo, Romeo Cora had every opportunity in this world to do what he wanted to do. He he's You're his right. time in Detroit's over. He 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 had yeah. his opportunity. You well, have one shot, one moment, whatever the Eminem thing is. Seize the opportunity. Didn't do well, it. Well, speaking Goodbye. of ending up, speaking of opportunities closing, uh, Eric Armstead chapter with the 49ers have closed. It, it is closed. He's gone. He joins the Jags to add, and this is a per Ian Rappaport. A dark horse emerges. The Jaguars are closing in on a deal to add a huge presence to their defense as they set to sign former. 
49ers defensive tackle Eric Armstead. And we talked about him yesterday, you know, and, and the, the possibility of signing DJ Reader and Eric Armstead. And the, the thing I brought up and Lucas kind of gave me some insight on it because at first I'm like, it wouldn't, isn't Eric Armstead, he can play on the edge and he he's had a, a honestly his best season was playing on the edge. But at this point in time, he he's he plays mainly defensive tackle. Not I mean, he's kind of he plays that Ali McNeil rule, which he, he would play, but you can move him to the edge. He he saw with the Jags. I want to ask you, you can give your reaction to that if you want, but the, the main question I have is any what are your expectations for not just free agency, but also as we head towards the season, what Brad Holmes, what else he may address or who else he might sign. You guys, anything on your guys' mind moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think Eric Armstead, if you were going to sign him at that price and which he went for, I think you would have rather have gone out and signed an actual edge rusher that plays the position fully. Obviously, Armstead can do it, but he's more defensive tackle. But, I mean, I think he might go out and sign a guard and maybe a wide receiver. But other than that, I think you're kind of ready for the draft. I think you do have to address the offensive linemen. And I think you maybe uh, might bring Josh Reynolds back or you might sign another wide receiver. But I think they're kind of set uh, besides a few more moves. Obviously, like I said, the offensive line, maybe you sign another edge rusher. But like I think wide, wide receiver, guard or defensive edge. What do you think, Lucas? I mean, guard I think they'll be add, in play they'll, too. I mean, I I think guards in play potentially. Yeah, say. I mean, I don't know. I think guard maybe for like a depth piece, like we talked about yesterday, like an Evan Brown, like maybe one one of those types of pieces. But I think if anything, with Josh Reynolds, with him in question marks, if he goes, maybe like a Tyler Boyd or a receiver kind of of that nature. And then I I don't even think it necessarily means that they're done in the cornerback room for free agency. I, get, I mean, Stephon Gilmore. There's still a couple of guys that are available. Darius Williams still available. Oh, no, he went back to the Rams pardon me on that one but there's still guys out there that can make a difference and I mean if you want to fully put this cornerback room together I don't think adding another free agent hurts anything or another cornerback hurts anything uh real quick I want to give a shout out daddy Tev Tev thank you for the five dollars says do you guys think Brad hey. gets a veteran safety like Diggs well great question and appreciate you for the, for the donation there I, I did want to bring this up Boone I want your your thoughts on this as well I think three positions or really two, because the third one, I don't know if they'll address, to be honest with you guys. It, I'm talking just free agency, not in the draft. We have safety, which you need depth there. Quandre Diggs would be, I think, a great add. Another corner, just to compete, we'll see as the season gets closer. And, and you know, Kendall Fuller went for about $8 million today. He, he went to the Miami Dolphins. So I'm not talking about a signing like that. I'm talking about more of just a, hey, bring in a veteran corner, see what he can do. Maybe Brad does that. I think safety's in play, definitely, if I had to pick one. I don't know, guys, if they sign another edge. I think they're it, done with it, with edges, to be honest, my, until the draft. Yeah. My, my and maybe a wide receiver. We'll see. So I, I think the name that what you put there kind of hit the nail on the head there is um, I put here in my notes the rest of free agency. I think the number one and number two, and this is where I'm at with it, and I get the safety thing. There's a lot of safeties left um, in this market, and I think what's going to happen, and I, I – I might be wrong with this, but it feels like there's so many safeties on the market, and as it gets going longer, maybe they don't get as much money as some of these guys thought they were because it's like it's taken so long and uh, kind of that market's so diluted right now. But I, I think there's the two positions to me, Jeff. I think it's guard and defensive end. And I think whatever one, I think there's going to have to be one that you address, in my opinion, at the rest of free agency here. And, and, and then whatever you don't, that's what you kind of use for your first round draft pick. That's where I'm kind of at with it. It's go out and maybe get a guard. Like I, and, and I don't know these. I'm not a guard enthusiast and an expert here. And, and I know you guys are like like Lucas. You might know a little of these guys, these two guys a little bit better than me. Um, the top two guards left right now in free agency is Dalton Risner and, and Kevin Zietler. I don't know what the price price would be Kevin on that. Kevin would be nice. He's 34 years old, coming off the Ravens. And, and from what I've read in some of the film that I saw earlier today when I was looking him up, he was actually really good for the Ravens in, in that run no, game he... there. So that's a guy that I'm like, okay, maybe go out and get him or get a Dalton Risner from um, the Vikings here. And he's still 28 years old. So. To me, it's like, hey, you can go address that, and then maybe you don't have to go Jackson Powers Johnson and move up in the draft to go get him. And maybe you could still get a Cooper BB in the third and add depth on that, and then you feel a lot more comfortable, and then you can just go with defensive end at the beginning. But then, like, free agency. There, there's Chase Young, Kalias Campbell, J Jadavian Clowney. There's, like, 
there's still guys left out there that you can go get. So I expect Brad, if I'm being honest, to at least get one, maybe two more pieces in free agency, whether it's either one or two guard defensive end. And then that second one, a safety or, or, or bringing back Josh Reynolds. That's where I'm at with it. And like there, there's right now, we, we talk about these holes. He filled two holes up in, in corner and in, in defensive tackle. And there's still three or four more holes that need to get filled up. And you're not going to be able to fill all of them up with p- players that are going to be able to play right away in the draft. So you're going to have to address more in free agency. That's where I'm at with it, fellas. I'm I, That's where I'm at. I'd rather go guard right now and then and then get like a Cooper BB later on. Mm-hmm. Ooh, shout out. Yeah, answer 14. Uh, we, we appreciate the donation there. Uh, he donates $20. Wow, we, thank you. He says, we will bear witness to greatness. Lions dominate on three, one, two, three. Dominate. There dominate. you go. I love that. Uh, I love that. And, and to, to kind of answer that question, you brought up guard. I think that, and, and Lucas, I'll let you kind of cook here and, and just some of the guys that you know of that are free agent, free agents that are guard. I think guard and safety could be addressed in free agency here. If I had to, and maybe wide receiver, we'll, we'll get to Josh in a little bit here, but you're just the free agent guard. You think that's a, a realistic thing the Lions do? I mean, it, it could be. And then again, I could also see them getting like a Dalton Reisner or Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler is a former Pro Bowl and he's been good wherever he's went. So if they add him next to Graham Glasgow and Taylor Decker and Panay Sewell, I mean, they won't be missed. Shouldn't say they won't be missing Jonah at all, but there won't be that much of a drop off, I think, at least in this year. And they could double up in the draft. But safety, I think that's something that they'll eventually get down to in free agency, because even with CJ last year, that was late in free agency and they have time. Mm -hmm. I think Quandre Diggs is a perfect fit that you brought up. I don't think they're going to go after like a Justin Simmons, but they'll definitely go after a depth piece. And again, they can still double up on that in the draft as well, because if you as much as we love them, injury concerns for sure. So you got to get somebody there, in my opinion. I would prefer a free agent, but they might go and do what I asked them a couple weeks ago and get a Kalen Bullock in the draft or something like that. You never know. Yeah, I I do. I think, you know, even guard, I I do think they need a veteran guard. Um, That's just how I feel about it. And we'll get to that comment a little bit here because uh, DB is something that I, I do think the Lions address. I think at free agency, if I had to give you a position or positions they address, I would go safety and guard. Mm-hmm. And maybe they sign a corner before training camp. I just don't know if they sign another edge like that. That's just how I, I think in the draft, they'll address edge. Maybe they draft another corner and maybe they draft another guard, which what I actually do receiver? think it, it, it maybe in a, a wide receiver. So that that's, that's, thank you for that, Mike. That's where I think they, they that's what they, I think they address in, in the draft. I think free agency, they address guard and safety. That's where I'm at fellas. If I had to kind of break it down, the, I don't know where you safety, guys are at with well, the safety straight. market. Like, there's so many guys there. Like, remember yeah. last year, the C.J. Garner-Johnson? I don't know about you guys. It felt like to me last year, like, I was a little shocked. That, like, I didn't see a guy like C.J. coming coming to Detroit. And they brought him in. Like, I feel like it's going to be a similar scenario this year to where there's all of these safeties on the board in the free agency market right now. And there's just guys, like, there, there's teams that already have their their secondary filled out. And you're looking for a, a veteran like the Quandre Diggs. I did see Quandre is actually speaking with the Colts right now, and that might be his landing spot. So keep an eye on that. So – if that happens, there's there's still a lot of options out there, and they might spend a little money, but there's a lot of safeties out there that are going to say, hey, I'll, I'll do what CJ did last year. I'll take a one-year deal, $8 million, and, and I'll come in there, and I'll, I'll, tr- I'll try and earn myself another contract just based on what's happening right now with the safety rooms. So that's where yeah. I'm, I'm with you on, Jeff, or with you on that, Jeff, is I, I do think there's a very good chance you see Brad Holmes sign a, a safety in this free agency. And, and and I I think me and you are actually like just side by side on this a guard like I think I think you you fill that hole and get a guard and then wide receiver if Josh Reynolds comes back he does if not second third fourth round go get another go get another wide receiver and weapon and then the edge make Darius Robinson maybe that's the answer Detroit loves him Brad and them love him he loves Detroit maybe that's the answer and then, and then to me that fills out everything and then you can just start adding depth after that. Yeah, we'll we'll get to this uh, right here. Dante one five one. Thank you for the ten dollars, brother. We appreciate you. Uh, he says thoughts on the Washington Commanders trading Sam Howell oh. to the Seahawks. Does that basically tell everyone in the NFL that Washington is going to draft a QB? But which QB? Just wondering. Go Lions. Um, and I'll let. And this is Lucas's guy here, Sam Howell. Yeah. I mean, you were <laughs> hyping him up all last year. So, but I, I think to answer that question very quickly, yes. This, I mean, it, it, Stevie Wonder could have saw they were going to draft a quarterback. So, yeah. I mean, it, they, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, come on. No Stevie jokes. Get come your on. bets ready for the Seahawks to win the NFC West. That's all I got to say. 
I, I <laughs> no, wanted to get you guys no, thoughts no. on this comment yeah. because while I agree to a certain extent, I got to say it's mostly Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, like making this like a player's destination and obviously them being uh, coaches and GMs that players want to play for. But what do you guys think on this? I mean, Dan I mean he kind of he, he killed the PR too when he left. Right. He was like, yeah, sorry, I want to win a Super Bowl and get paid. Detroit can't offer you both of that. It's like, well, you hey, wait, wait, that, when you that was a fake here, tweet. Like, that was fake. Fake oh, tweets. Okay. Yeah. Hey, oh no, sorry. you got duped. No, no. Oh no. They got clawed. They they got columned. Yeah. They, sorry, Lucas. They got clawed there. Yeah. No. You got Jeffrey Column. Uh well, his name is gonna appear. Oh. He's gonna appear in the chat. Red Explain Red yourself. Oh. <laughs> Just bad no. credibility. No, no. A little awareness. I looked like Will Harrison covered oh, on uh, social media that day. <laughs> Will Harrison covered. Straight burn. Uh, to be honest, Lucas, I saw that. I'm like, damn. And I clicked, it sounds like, like something CJ would say <laughs> after when he left Philly. Do you, do you guys want to know how, how I saw that? Shout and I thought it was Dan, real? Yep. What was Fish? Fish quote tweeted it. And went at CJ. Fish, Fish. Fish you, post tweeted it, and he went at CJ. Pause. He went at CJ. He was like, I don't like. He said something like, went at him, and I was like, let's go, Fish. And then I clicked on it, and it was fake, and I was like, oh no, Fish. <laughs> yeah, bad, Fish fell bad. for it. Yeah, if, if Fish falls for it, it's fair to fall for it too. I mean, Fish, he's a wizard, so you know what? It's all right, Lucas. Oh, no, hey, Lucas. I told you, I, I've gotten God a lot of times. I lost um, the but, day. To answer that question, and I and I'm gonna try to say this respect. Because again, I like CJ, but like, we being for real, one player, yeah, CJ kicked down the door. Not, uh, I don't know, Dan Campbell, the, 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 the players' coach, or or Brad Holmes, uh, a guy that again you see Graham Glasgow come out and say they did right by me. I'm gonna do right by them. You you see these players have press conferences and say I love what Brad's doing. Everyone compliments Brad as a head coach, but yeah, CJ GJ kicked down the door. I mean, I, I don't. I wouldn't go that far. I, David I Montgomery. Go, like, what do we? What do we do? It's like we're acting like yeah, CJ. He had to crawl so we could walk. Like, chill out. I mean, what do we? That's how I feel about it. I don't know if that was a little too aggressive, but that I know. I, I wouldn't no, say he kicked out the door. I you would just. Say that. We just an hour and a half ago saw a press conference of DJ Reader coming in and saying, I know what this culture is about. And I like what these, what Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have built here. Like I felt that right away. I wanted to sign here because of that. He didn't go, well, right. I saw the free agents come in and, and knock the door down for us to come in Detroit. No, he didn't do that. It, it has to do with Brad Holmes has to do with Dan Campbell. And it has to do with the players on the field winning football games. Those three mm -hmm. things are the reason guys are coming here. It's the same thing with Carlton Davis. And, 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 and to be honest, want to know a fourth piece to that as well? It's all the people in the chat. It's the fans. Because Carlton <laughs> Davis came in and said, I know about Brad Holmes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I kicked CJ out of my – oh, easy. That's funny. Well, how about that real quick before I keep going? The beef of CJ Garner Johnson and easy is one of an yeah, all-time – I will remember that for the rest of my life. That was That was great. Um, but even Carlton Davis, his press conference, like he, I, I, he's like, I hear about Brad Holmes, the Dan mm -hmm. Cam Campbell culture, and how he, everyone wants to play for him, the players, and as also when I, we played the Detroit Lions, the fans that traveled to Tampa and everything about the fans. It had nothing to do with CJ coming in and opening it up for for other free agents. It, it was never that. It, it was what they have built. Like there was a reason CJ came. You know, they signed CJ was because CJ probably saw the same thing that these guys are seeing now. Yeah, this comment, I think Benji nailed it. Shout out to you, oh, Benji. Yeah. He says, Jamal Williams, killer drafts, hard knocks. DJ Reader even said, quote, the guy you see on TV, end quote, when talking about Dan Campbell. So, yep. I mean, there's a there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, boys, we have breaking news. Like, big time no. breaking news. Yeah. Like, it's it, this is huge. No, I'm you not need to tweet something out? It's, uh, yeah. They just, like, brought back Riley Patterson or something, I bet. Anthony Pittman left the Lions. <laughs> Dude, that, hap that happened at 11.35 a.m. I'm trolling. I'm that. trolling. I'm trolling. I'm trolling. But still, can't do that. I had to, me <laughs> I had to, up. I had to mention that. Up. I know you. It, it, fake it's, news. Not, it's not fake news. It's, it's not Dude, breaking. You, I'm kidding. When you did I'm, that, I opened my Twitter up and Saquon Bartley, Barkley put up like a, a notes app. So I was like, oh, no, what happened? No, I thought he was suspended for like a season. Come on. 
Special teamer, Anthony Pittman, former Lions. Tom Pelissero put this out. Uh, former Lions linebacker Anthony Pittman plans to sign with the Commanders per source. He played in every game over the past these seasons for Detroit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, now reunited with Washington assistant GM Lance New uh, Newmark, who who, who really do the who um, you know who of course was a was Jeff. a part of the Lions. Lance was, uh, but yeah, you know what, Jeff? Sorry, you, guys, like a third, you, you need like a ten second timeout or something. That was like yeah, that over did I get you? I had you ready to tweet something, didn't I? Yeah, huh. it was old. It happened today, but hey, you know it is what it is. Uh, they got germs. I don't give a damn. Um, but yeah, Anthony Pittman. How significant is this loss? You know, let's talk about it. Special team. What are it's they going to do? Day fit. Jeff, is Jeff, he worried? Jeff trying to reel this back in right now is killing me. Uh, no, I can't I, believe I wanted, he just did that. That I, is I, unbelievable, I, I, dude. I that is something. unbelievable. Khalil yeah, Dorsey signed. Did you, it would have been better if you did that with the, like Khalil Dorsey resigned with the Detroit Lions. Shout out. Yeah, I mean, Khalil Dorsey resigned. Yeah, I mean, that. speaking about kind of what, Lucas said earlier, like, that's a guy that's going to come in. He's going to compete. He, you know, he'll be depth. But let's be real here. I mean, you want to break down Khalil Dorsey resigning? Like, seriously? Hey, it's one of our I, I, I brought it up. You brought up Anthony Pittman. Khalil that's Dorsey's fair. better than Anthony Pittman as far as special yeah. teams goes. Oh, my. Are we going to debate who's the better special teamer? <laughs> hey, one of, one of them caught a, a germ dot and one of them didn't. Yeah, and one of them had a – Football bounce off his helmet for uh for the biggest play in the NFC Championship game. That was that was Vildor. Don't 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 you throw that yeah. out. Uh, oh yeah yeah you're right. Yeah you're hey right. you're right you're right you're right. Uh, check right. yourself. Yep you're uh, right. No I'll, I'll check myself. Two, Jeff. <laughs> yep Strike you're right two. you're right. That was yep. No I'll, hey, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. When I'm wrong I'll tell you I'm wrong. I don't <laughs> mind doing that. Uh, speaking of the NFC North I want to bring this up. The Chicago Bears what the hell are they doing? And I guess I'll ask you guys this. Uh, Justin Funny Fields. Way. This was put out today. The in this is ML football report. The asking price for the Bears for from the Bears for Justin Fields as part of the holdup in a potential per, a potential trade per ESPN. Quote: The longer the teams wait to make a deal for Fields, the cheaper he becomes. End quote. League executive said, "Guys, we're at a point now where Justin Fields will probably be a backup quarterback." My point is, proven, the Raiders, Ryan maybe. Bowles is the worst GM in the NFL. Yeah, that's point blank. That's brutal it is. that it's even got to that point. I don't even know what teams would still be in, inquiring about him at this point. But, like, what a fumble, man. Yeah. They could have at least got a second for him at the beginning of the offseason. Do mm -hmm. you know actually what I thought? And I, I heard a couple people say this, like Bears fans, and it kind of makes sense to where they should just – at this point, and it probably sucks to do to Fields because it's, it's his career a little bit, but they should probably just hold on to him during the season – and when a team has their quarterback get hurt, remember last year there was like nine quarterbacks or ten quarterbacks that got hurt. Yeah. And and you just sit there and you wait for a team that needs a quarterback and you say, hey, we'll take a second for him. And a team has to do it. Like in in that like that's a good GM move to do. And if you're a good GM, that's probably what you do at this point because you were so bad before and you're one of the worst GMs in the league that you ended up losing out on a second round pick because of this. But. That's probably like the best option going forward is saying, let's just keep fields. It sucks on his end because he's going to have to sit there and uh, watch a guy like Caleb Williams come into the building and take his position and be the captain. And now everyone, instead of looking at Justin Fields, is looking at Caleb Williams. Like it's probably a really weird position for those for Justin Fields to be in, but better betterment of the, the franchise. And if you want to get the best value from it, that's probably the route you take. Will Ryan Poles do that? I mean, probably not, man. I don't. Desmond Ritter and Sam Howell got trades before Justin Fields did. Yeah, that's a yeah. very good point. Do you think Desmond there's a chance, like this comment says from Eric, uh, that they trade the pick and keep Fields? No. Or do you think that's totally out of the realms? Caleb uh, Williams is going number one. Wow. <laughs> like, imagine if they actually did trade the pick, though. Like the outrage from the fans. Like, oh my god, it'd just be terrible. To well, be they're going fan. to his. They're going to his pro day. Uh, Caleb Williams is pro day. They're going to meet with them. Like, I get that, but look at the commanders. I mean, they're pretty set. I, and I get uh, it's harder to make a decision like this because Fields is better than Howell. So, you know, you sit there and think, well, I don't want to trade him yet. And then we don't like. We end up not liking Caleb when we talk to him more. You know, they just like I get it, but at the same time, it's simple: it's supply versus demand. There was a high supply or excuse me, high demand of quarterbacks before all free agency started. Now look at now look at the teams that need a quarterback. The the demand is way lower uh, and the supply is is way lower um, because 
now the quarterbacks are signed. So, like, you look at Justin Fields, you're like, oh, he's there. I mean, they might, they might have a team like the Raiders who are like, you know what, we, we do need a starter. But also the Raiders might be like, you know what, we'll just roll out with Gardner Minshew and we'll draft our franchise quarterback next year. You know, I mean, who knows? So I, I just think it was a dumb move by the Bears. If you're certain you're going to draft a quarterback, no matter who it is, it doesn't have to be Caleb. And you know how it might even, it's not even about me liking Caleb. If you don't even like Caleb, it's fine. If you like another quarterback, you at least trade him. You have three quarterbacks that are going top three, most likely. So pick one. You know, if you don't like Caleb, you got Jaden Daniels. If you don't like him, you got Drake May. I don't know. I think that you should have traded him when not teams needed a quarterback. Uh, well, JJ too. I mean, he might sneak into the top ten as well, but at, at least top three. Uh, Jeff, which now people are arguing it's JJ. So who knows? Is it is it hard for you to pull pull videos up? I just sent us a, I sent a a, a, ch- a message in our group chat. Do you guys remember this video a couple of weeks ago as well? The Justin Fields one. No, let me. Oh, is it I'll him around like the, the, the timing of everything with Justin Fields, like this whole story, like this this whole thing with Justin Fields. It's in, like the end. This is why we love the NFL. The storylines behind everything, and and this video from like two weeks ago, right before the combine, that everyone oh, was it, like, they told him he was going home to Atlanta, and now Kirk Cousins <laughs> is there, and now he's just <laughs> not getting traded. Is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> okay no um i'm not gonna lie that that's kind of messed up actually that sad. yeah that what? you ain't going home you're not that, going yeah. you guys are, you guys are a little yeah, soft dude that's fun that's no that's, 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 that's kind of funny off, dude dude the that's funny doing... like he just celebrated going home and kirk cousins just took his job there like kirk bangs i mean that's like Man's like doing. Uh, I mean, he's jumping. He's jumping in the kitchen. He's getting excited. And yeah, too bad, bud. It's a bit NFL business. Now you're gonna go to the Raiders. Hopefully, I mean, that might not be the spot for Max Jones got traded before this man. Yeah. I mean, he forgot. And that who was his before GM the. Was, was that before decade. the combine too? No, that was like a couple days ago. after. That was yeah. That was just oh, recently. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'll say that. Gardner Minshew to the Raiders. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it It just is what it is. I think right now the best place for him is the Raiders. They're, they don't want him. They don't want a guy. Right. They got Gardner Minshew. They're probably, they could still draft somebody. Minshew Mania this year in Vegas. I, he's I, overthrowing I, Mahomes and Harbaugh. I did see that the, the Broncos were do like, they were like doing their homework on Justin Fields. I don't know what that means. I'm guessing that means they're like seeing if he, they can bring him in. And if they draft a rookie, they can just let him play. I, I don't know. I, like, Ryan Poles at the end of the day, like it just keeps coming back. Like he's just the worst GM in the NFL. That's all it well, is. Well, easy, easy put. I guess that's an old video where they're making fun. Um, is high school special teams that's something? An old video, basically. So who knows? If that was real, I was like, that's messed. That's messed up. We also have Spembo in here. Shout out to Spembo. He's as Boone is the only oh. guy on the planet who could block DJ Reader one v one. I yeah I know I mean. Look at the technique. I you mean, could get the leverage. You could get the leverage, oh, yeah. Booner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you – yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I, I, listen, I listened to Jason man. Kelsey on that one. Oh, yeah, Jason Kelsey said, get hands underneath and get low and get the leverage. Get those legs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, I mean, you Don't saw him at the top of feet. Yeah, you get Hank Fraley in there, man, working with um, Boone. Are you kidding get me? me going. And look, get me on the edge as well. No one's blocking me either. Get me on the edge. He'll, he'll, he'll get him ready. <laughs> now you're a pass rusher now. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Spell oh, Bosch. Spell says, miss you guys. We miss you, Spenny. Miss, miss you, Spenny. Spenny. Miss, you easy. miss the boys, man. Yeah, what's going on with the Red Wings, Mike? Yeah, if you see me looking <laughs> up, that's that's me looking at no, my TV. Good. I've been kind no, of No, talk to us. We, we got time. We got time. No, it it it's not been good, man. I, I did they know. end up losing? Yeah, they're down three, uh, four, one now. Yeah, so <laughs> two minutes uh, left. It's looking like another L. All I'm saying is, next time Dylan War- Larkin walks into that building, they just need to give him a raise and say sorry for ever saying anything bad about you. Sorry for saying you didn't deserve that first line center money. Sorry for everything because that man carries this team. That's end of conclusion. 
that's all I've seen from this last six games. He's the, the guy that makes things go round. And no, it's not a dumbass patch that they put on the jersey, even though it is kind of ugly. But this team, man, it, I just don't get it. I don't get it. And the goaltending has completely went to shit within the last week. And, yeah, the defense has been playing bad, but, like, not this bad. And guys just don't look like they care. I mean, I think a move should have been made at the deadline. Maybe if this would have happened, like, a little bit before, a move would have been made just to prove a point because some of these guys look careless out there. It's truly uh, – it's devastating, man. It not good. <laughs> that Yeah, Mike, I mean, I, I wanted you to have the floor here. Uh, I know you've, been, you've been emotionally invested. So have a lot of us fans. Uh, the Red Wings are, yeah, I, I know, buddy. It's all right. It's all right. Talk to us. We're here for you. <laughs> oh, no, Mike. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do live on air real quick before this game's over? I'm going to do this. Don't quick. do me like that, Booner. I'm cashing out of my Red Wings bets Don't right now. No! They're probably not going to give you it. a cash out. No, it did. I, I put I put a, a a unit on the Red Wings plus four thousand to win the East, and I get a whole unit back. I get everything back. The Stanley Cup, I lose half of my money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they played keep... this Arizona team like twice in a week, and they're fucking terrible. And they've scored like three goals total. So like, this team's gotten whomped on like the last two other teams <laughs> they played that scored like eight goals. Here are the Red Wings scoring three fucking combined. I I, I don't know, man. I just don't. Well, holy shit! You know what? Should let's, we let's should take... we go protest about the patch? Like, should we go to LCA and get signs and stuff and protest the patch? Like, do we I want to go do that? Want. I honestly, I wish a patch could make a team play this bad because that would be a <laughs> nice excuse to use. But that no, a patch has nothing to do with it, hey, and that, that's just fight, getting Mike. annoying to see. What? I thought they got in a fight. I thought there was a fight. They had they showed fight. You know, hey, the one person practice. that got in a fight actually scored a fucking goal this game. So maybe he's the <laughs> only one that cares. Maybe they all need to start fighting. Just Royal Rumble it at LCA tomorrow. I'll come down to practice. Let's get it going. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'll come with you there. Oh, I love Mike, man, when he goes off. That is funny, Jack's better man. hide, man. Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> Jack's, they're shitty too. <laughs> yeah, Jack's, like, Jack's, Jack's is like, Dad, fuck this team, man. Like, <laughs> He said no. he wants to grow up and play for the Red Wings, man. I'm like, I don't know if you want to play for this team, man. I'll tell you what, just keep him away from basketball. I mean, I don't know if he ain't going to want to play for the Pistons. I'll tell you that. Uh, right now, at least. Yeah, so I didn't cash out of my playoffs bet. I'm riding that one out, by the way, boys. Yeah, that's don't fair. Do it. Well, even playoffs, yeah, I'm, I'll keep that one in there. But the other ones, I'm out on. Well, we'll get Bill Markman we'll... deserves a raise. End of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you, heard, you, heard the you heard the man. End of it. Well, well, we'll switch to a team that is winning. Uh, I want to bring up something that DJ Reader said earlier in the press conference. I have a quote here from Eric Woodyard from ESPN, and I, I think it's a great quote. We didn't bring it up earlier. I think we can bring it up now, um, and I'll read it. Eric Woodyard tweeted out, um, this is what he said in the uh, presser, which I noticed, but I forgot to bring up. It's, a, it's such a great thing he said. DJ Reader on similarities between Bengals and Lions turnarounds. He said, quote, I think they're ahead of where I was when I got there. These guys got that same taste in their mouth that I got. I got the Super Bowl. I got to the Super Bowl and lost. These guys, these guys got to the NFC Championship game and lost. Um, and then he said uh, a little bef- uh, under that, talking more about the turnaround. But, fellas, like, and I honestly, if you think about it, and it is a good point to bring up, the playoff experience oh. that you have amongst some of the signings you have. Yeah, that, I, by the way, I saw the face you made, Lucas. I, you you got to hear that quote. I know when you read it, you're like, hold up. What do you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. But what I tried he meant, to hold it, hold it in, too. What he meant, what he meant was – the Bengals, when he first got there, that's when they got Burrow. They took the necessary steps. You look at some of the signings they've made, guys. Carlton Davis won a Super Bowl. DJ Reader played in a Super Bowl. Was one playoff game. So he's been a big part of that. And then Amik Robertson, he's you know he's you know, he's depth, but he's gritty. But we're talking about the big two signings. Don't here. forget about Marcus Davenport too. Marcus Davenport, he's player. played in playoff games. What do you fellas think? He got playoff experience and DJ Reader comparing the Bengals to the Lions. It's, it's no, a good I mean, team. I think to be it's, val- to, fellas. it's valuable because you talk about teams having that hangover. I mean, he's lost in the Super or lost in the Super Bowl. He's also lost in the AFC Championship game, and he's been able to stay consistent. So he's one of those guys when things go wrong, a lot of these young players on this defense can look up to him and be like, I got you. I got you. Hutch, you keep doing your thing. I'll be holding it down in the middle. All the rest of you just worry about yourselves, and they'll all turn out well. So I think just as a – Level of calmness out on the field, he'll definitely be very important there. 
Yeah, and could you even argue that maybe that that this Lions team is more complete than the Bengals team that following year? And so Absolutely. for a guy to have a guy to have the confidence like that and kind of bleed it over into the new locker room, it it you know it means a ton. Yeah. <laughs> You look like you were for a second, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell if Jeff was fro- Jeff froze on my screen. So I was like, "Oh, Jeff's." I, I was like, "Is he talking?" I I didn't know. No, I mean, I'm with that. And, and, and to the big thing, when I first heard the quote, and when I was watching the the the, the press conference, it's just to me, it's like you're bringing guys in who know, like, not that just know how to get there, because they're like, "Yeah, you want that experience, you want all of that," but to me, like, what you want is, is like everyone that has that like that fire like he he hasn't won a super bowl yet and i know like carlton davis got brought in he's won a super bowl so he had that experience but like he had like he has that like i need to go get that still like he has that fire burning in him that, like i've been there i know what it's like and i need to get back there because i want to win one and it's the same thing with the, every single lions player that's returning it's we've been there now to the nfc championship game we know what it's like now we have that fire to kind of go and win the full thing and, and i think dj reader coming in having that fire like being like hey, i need i need a lombardi trophy like i want that and we all have the same the same kind of mindset on that now because you guys just fell short last year let's go do it together like i, I love that I, I i think that's like very very um when you have a, a, like a bunch of guys all together with, with that same mindset, that's when you get things done. And that's like when you guys are like, when they're in the weight room in the off season, when they're doing, you know, when they're sitting in the film room in the off season, like everything they're doing, they know in the back of their head, it's for a Lombardi trophy. Like typically Absolutely. like lions in the past, they're sitting there and they're like, we're just doing this to hopefully we can go win six games and not, not get the first overall pick, or we can just get to the playoff. Like, no, it's like now they're sitting in these film rooms they're having meetings they're doing all this stuff. And it's with guys like DJ reader in the room that are like, no, we're going to win a Lombardi. Like th- this is all for a Lombardi. This isn't for a division anymore. It's not for a conference. It's for a Lombardi trophy. Um, so having that mindset in my head, like I, I, I love that. And, and I think that brings a lot to this. And a Carlton Davis, who's won one already, that brings a lot to this football team. Yeah. With higher expectations, like that, the, the, the level rises. Well, like you can't afford to make mistakes. You need somebody in the locker room that can keep everybody calm and kind of keep everybody on track. It's Set funny the guys. Stand, keep the standards. Set the standard yes. and keep it. Yes. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And you get a captain, a former captain. I think he will be captain. We'll see. He's got to earn it, but the dude's a hell of a leader, DJ reader and Carlton Davis is like you said, he's played, he's won at the highest level um, with Tam- with Tom Brady. Like these guys know what it takes to win. Now, you go back last year. This is what I, I thought was super interesting. And I was thinking about this earlier. When CJ Gardner Johnson was signed, what did he what was he coming off of, guys? A Super Bowl appearance. What did everyone say that he would bring? That leadership, that that edge. Like, oh, it'd be it's gonna be awesome to have CJ in this locker room with the players. He knows what it takes, kind of what we're saying now. I think DJ Reader will provide what CJ Gardner Johnson was supposed to provide or provide what he did provide without the BS. Like, I, I think what people thought they were getting out of CJ, you're going to get that out of DJ reader, like a guy who's going to be not in, in, you know, on the sideline waving or anything like that. Like the things that people didn't like the blue ski mask, like DJ ain't going to do any of that, but DJ will be a voice in the locker room for these players, especially when you get into these big games. And, and again, like, you know, going back even further, look at bugs. I mean, people loved Bugs oh, because yeah. of his because of his leadership. He would he would he would talk to the team before the game. It's all on YouTube with all the uh, you know the mic'd up clips of him speaking to the team and, and hyping them up. Mm-hmm. Like DJ Reader is all of that, and a damn good player. And he's he fits a position in need. So, I I do think the off the field stuff with DJ Reader is being a little underrated right now. I think he's going to be great for on and off the field. And like that's what it comes down to. Dude, dude's a he's feels a hell like. Of a player. It feels like on this defense too, like they're, they're building this defense, and and yeah, they struggled last year at times, but there there were times towards the second half of the year, uh, they started taking that next step outside of obviously the corner play and wide receivers, but like that defensive line, the linebackers. Think about this defense compared to other ones in the league. I know, like we're we're oh like the stars, the star thing. It's like the big names, all of that comes to mind for people that they want on this team. This defense, like right now, the leadership on this and, and the guys that have that leadership and that winning mentality, 
Alex Anzalone, Cam Sutton. Um, now you have a Kirby Joseph going into year three who's learned from CJ. And he, he he's kind of has that feeling now um, about it. Aiden Hutchinson who's going into that year to where he was kind of a leader lat going in, at the end of the year, year last year. And he's kind of stepping into that role. And now you have a DJ Reader who can do that. Carlton Davis who's won a Super Bowl. You have a lot of guys that can like have experience now and, and like they have that leadership uh, quality to where they can help like – this isn't like a young defense anymore, in my opinion. Like you have some guys, and I know some like the year three sounds young. These guys have experience now. Like there's there's some experience on this football team outside of Brian Branch and like Jack Campbell, um, it, like a couple young guys. So I expect this defense to take another. Like you just added some big time vets, big time vets, big time. Right, we got about 14 minutes left, fellas. Uh, we'll get to mailbag here. We'll answer some questions and we'll get to. Um, as many any thoughts, concerns, really anything. I mean, spark a discussion. Uh, we'll get to the chat here and we'll go through it. Um, we'll start uh, with the first question. It's more just a general question. <laughs> Sir, mailbag. How's everyone doing today? Boys, how are we doing today? I'm, I'm doing, doing good. good. I'm doing, doing good. Amazing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Doing Not great gen anymore. Gentry. I know Gentry's kind of, you know, he's going through some things. He's facing some adversity. You know, he's a, Not doing he's a soldier. That's what he is. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Nobody asked me anymore. <laughs> you look good today, Country. Turn the camera off. Yeah. Uh, Steven Mailbag, excited or nervous about the uniforms? I, I mean, boys, it, it, is it fair to say I'm excited, but I'm also nervous because I, I loved the idea of getting the new helmets, but I also hated the uniform the new helmet was on. So, like, I'm excited, but also, like, please don't fumble this, Lions, please. Just I'll don't do it. it. <laughs> I, 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 I want the black unis. I'm selfish. That's what I want. Me too. I've been asking for it for a while. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm interested, excited, but I'm also nervous that they are going to be like shitty or just like too bland or like they underdo it. So I'm excited, but they got to do well, it. If you look at the uniforms around the NFL, like a lot of the newer ones, they've all been pretty good. And, and like obviously, yeah. like with Nike now that's and everything, right. like they every like I haven't really seen a newer uniform that's been like ah, that's a really bad one. So I, I think it's going to be good. As long as it, um, I see Matt there, I don't know if he was talking about priority waste on them or not, but as long as priority waste isn't on the uni uniforms, I'm perfectly fine, content. Well, uh, let's uh, let's get to the next one. Eduardo, mailbag, can the NFC title game loss really feel them back an entire season to make it back? I I think it could feel them, fellas, but like fueling and results, I mean, look at what, did it fuel the Eagles? I mean, look at them. They regressed. So, like, it doesn't really come down to how much it feels you. It just comes down to, like, execution. A lot of things factor into football. I mean, the NFL, it's not just the, are you fueled? Are you motivated? You know, because I, I think this team, you can't question their motivation, but a lot of things kind of like, – a lot of things have to kind of fall in order, guys. It, it's luck. You know I mean, it's not a bad thing to say that. Comes I'm, down against to the you. I'm against you, Jeff. <laughs> I know what Lucas is trying to do. I'm against <laughs> – I'm against you on that, Jeff, because I'll say this: Nick Sirianni. I'm I'm a, I'm a Nick Sirianni fan. I actually like him, but guess what? The two, the OC, the DC left. All of that happened. Culture felt like it was it changed a little bit in in Philly this year, and they were motivated to start the year. They were undefeated for the longest. What were they like? Twelve and zero to start, thirteen and whatever it was. And then when things fell apart, you like that motivation was gone. Like to me. I'm taking Dan Campbell over Nick Sirianni when it comes to keeping these guys motivated. Like, do you remember all season long him just being like, I don't even care about next week. I don't care about last week. Next game, next game, next game. We're just focused on this ahead of us. I think he's going to have like these guys minds like locked into this and, and they're all going to go into this and they're going to be absolutely dialed in every week. And like the end goal, yes, is Super Bowl in the mind, but Dan's going to make sure that it, they don't veer off of the motivation. They know exactly what, what they're motivated for and what about. So I mm -hmm. think it's a little different. And you have Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn both returning to keep guys locked in and you have a lot of vets. Like, I think it's a little different than that Eagles example you gave out there. I'm just thinking about Sirianni after the Chiefs game yelling at the camera. And then they just, their whole season took a shit after that. Like, dude, should have just kept his trap shut. It's a yeah. little fool. No, yeah, but I, good, I don't think it'll yeah. be like the fuel that keeps them going through the entire season. But when you talk about like when they're down in the third quarter, when they need something to kind of spark them back up, I think a lot of those guys will be thinking back to that. And will be like, hey, we need to make up for last season and we can't let this game get in the way of that. So definitely fuel them. 
Yeah, I don't want to like question the mentality because it does mean something, but I, I still stand on like it, you got to have some luck fall your way, man. That's how it always is mm-hmm. in the NFL. Like if Aiden mm-hmm. given you need Aiden healthy, you need Jared healthy, like things just have to have to line up. But yeah, I agree with you guys. Like they're dude, they're gonna be motivated as hell. Like they're gonna be a team that you don't want smoke with. Uh that guy up north, Millbag. Can we see Booner's blocking technique again? AKA motorboating his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it I again. Mean, that's a, yeah. a, a special hey, occasion. He's one. camera shy now. He's camera shy. Special occasions. If if something comes up later on in a couple of days or shows or something, you might get it again. When Jason uh, Kelsey gets in my my head, and it, yeah. oh, that's it. When, when I think of when I hear, hear Jason Kelsey, <laughs> <laughs> it's that word that sets me off, man. Coach Walk Thirty Seven Millbag. What do we need to address in the draft now? From each of you. Well, uh, fellas, I already said mine. I, I think you address what well, I think they will address safety, corner, and guard. Oh, excuse me, not safety. Um, edge, corner, and guard. Three things. Yeah. Yeah. We're all safety. Right, no, guard. no, actually, I disagree with you. Sorry. I disagree. Wide receiver, edge, and guard. Not that, not in any specific order, but I think first three and then say, Corner, maybe the fourth, third, fourth round. Yeah, I didn't uh, mean to say I, safety. I, I don't think they'll draft a safety. Fool. Fool. What do you guys think? Anything I, different? I'd go, I mean, number one, and this it goes like edge, gap, guard, wide receiver, corner, and then safety. But I think number one, without a doubt, is, is edge. I think it's edge, guard, gap wide receiver i think those two top needs of edge and guard kind of outweigh, outweigh your wide receiver and i think you could kind of sign a wide receiver to kind of replace josh reynolds you don't like need to draft one you need to draft a guard for the future and you need to get edge oh you know what if we're doing the the gap i kind of like that i'm gonna do edge corner guard gap wide receiver That's how I feel. you still think corners that high Easy. up there yeah you gotta I, dude yeah like take another just a just do you not a, trust uh, Brad Holmes off season moves so far. Can can I do ask not you trust guys the a... additions of Amik Robertson and Carlton Davis the third? I think they are very good players. <laughs> <laughs> very I, fine I think, players. They're fine players. <laughs> but yeah, if they draft a corner, I would like another young corner. Learn behind these guys, and then if if Carlton Davis, you don't resign him, or you know, you got a guy. Now, that's just my opinion. What's up, Boone? You were saying term. something. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, it felt like a week ago we were all having these conversations about Xavier Leggett and Brian Thomas and training up for him. And now, and, and it may be my guess, and, and the only thing I can think of is is because Brad didn't really address edge yet. So yeah. that kind of goes to the need in round one. So I guess I just answered my question there, to be honest. I was just wondering, like, right. you 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 went gap to wide receiver there, but I felt like for a while we, we've all had these conversations about um, – you know, Xavier Leggett, some of these top guys in the draft oh! like around ed, end of round one, round two. Um, but it seems like people are starting to take a step back on that. And, and it's kind of not out of nowhere, but I'm just starting to notice, you know, reading, reading the room a little bit. Real quick, real quick, uh, shout out to Revive Graphics, a.k.a. Roman, a.k.a. The Goat. We, he's in the chat. Um, we posted some on a community page. It was his jersey swap he did with DJ Reader in a Detroit Lions uniform. The guy just does not miss. Also... We made a moderator. I uh, should have did that earlier. So you are now a mod, uh, Roman. I mean, that's wow. well deserved. That guy, for sure. Like I said, we're just living in the house he built. You know what I mean? That's just what that's it fair. is. Literally. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, just, it's just it's really that simple. Uh, let's uh, let's get to the next let's get to the next question here. We'll start with okay. We'll go to Travis. Mailbag. How big of a difference do all four you think that reader will have on our defense? I mean, I, fellas, huge difference. As Trump would say, Lucas, huge, huge. Massive, huge, huge, massive, huge. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's a. I think he's somebody, not single handedly, but somebody that will have a huge impact on reshaping the look of this defense for sure. Yeah, I don't think anyone would disagree. With, I mean, Booner, do you think he won't? No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah, it's gonna be massive on and off the field. I think both. I think both ways, leadership wise, on the field wise, it's gonna be massive. Again, I set the line for Aiden Hutchinson at six and a half, sixteen and a half sacks because. Woo! DJ Reader is in the building now, and he's going to help him out. He's going to do. He's going to go out there and he's going to make some problems. He he said in the press conference today. I know we probably didn't need that clarification from him, but he reiter- it reiterated, "Hey, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take on double teams. I'm going to push the the pocket. I'm going to make moves for him." So huge. 
Huge. Uh, Peter asked Milbag, are the Lions done signing players for a while? Uh, they might make a signing or two, maybe. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, fellas? Like, yeah, maybe he brings in a, they're, a they're gonna make They're going to make another signing or two, in my opinion. Like, free agency is not like yeah. it, There's going to be a lot of things done from now until the draft. I, I, I think there's going to be – there's a lot of free agents left, if we're being honest. Just go look at the list. Like there, there are some, there's some guys left. Yeah. So things aren't like, think about it. Josh Reynolds has like, that could be one of the moves. Josh Reynolds gets re-signed. That counts as a free agency move. He's not on our team right now. So mm-hmm. there's going to be another move, a couple, a couple moves done there, there. You have too many pieces still to add to this team to not, to not make a move. Yeah, yeah I, agree. I agree. And there's, there's positions that they're going to want to have at least competition in. Like, I'm sure if you look at the linebacker room, especially like even the edge room, wide receivers, they're going to want to add competition. So it's not going to be like any DJ reader signings or anything like that, but there's definitely going to be a couple more depth moves, a couple more uh, Marcus Davenport moves for sure. Okay. All right. Brian, uh, hey, another depth move? Real quick, real quick, before we do Brian's question, I thought of this and, and I meant to write it in my notes. I was thinking about it throughout the day today. I, I have trouble sometimes to put my thoughts on paper and I forget and then I, I they pop up randomly. So this is this is what I was thinking because I saw a comment in there. Um Zach said I don't think we have any more needs until we know who we draft. This is this is where what where my head went earlier today. Brad Holmes right now probably has a pretty good idea. If not, he's almost he's he's kind of has a rough draft of what his big board looks like and he's getting to that point to where he knows what position needs in the draft he feels comfortable with value wise. Whether it's like D end um, offensive line, wide receiver, uh, safety. Like he, I'm sure he has a big board, and he's like, all right, the value I can get in the draft, that's why he's addressing what he's addressing right now in the free agency. So I don't think it's we have to wait until the draft to – address to see because like for us yeah for us to answer these questions we need to see what gets done in the draft for for us to be like oh this is what he should do brad knows what he's going to do in the draft and has an idea of it like he has a good idea of the value of the different position groups that he's going to attack um even if it's best player available i'm sure he has an idea and a feel of what's going to happen and kind of the moves he's going to make so he's going to make moves whether it's you know he feels like it or like he's going to make moves uh, Brian says mailbag. Go, yeah, no, you're good. Brian says mailbag. Hassan or Sweat, we still have cash. What? Hassan, I mean, what are, Hassan Ruddick, I'm assuming. I which that would be a trade, and Sweat is a part of the – he's with the Bears. Devondre. So, oh. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know what yeah. Brian – I'm going to be honest, Brian. Yeah. Sweat's with the Bears. He signed an extension. Hassan has a year left. He could trade for him. But we'll see, Brian. Um, We'll see if Brad gets aggressive. I don't know if he will. Um, let's let's get to the next one here from ETN Mailbag. Which one of you gets the most heated during sporting events? Uh, I, I guess it depends on the event too. Like, I mean, it, it depends. Like, I'm a, like if I'm assuming Red Wings games, of course, Gentry's over here. Like, I mean, it depends. Now, and I think NFL, I'd probably give the nod to Booner or Lucas. You, I mean, you two are probably get the most. I mean, we had watch parties together. Probably mm-hmm. Boone, motion probably like he probably Boone. gets the most emotionally invested. Well, for me, the reason I get the most <laughs> emotional is because typically I'm like financially invested and emotionally, yes, and that's not that's a great why. mix, especially yeah. when it's like your favorite team. Um, so yeah, and then if I have someone trying to argue or talk to me, like I'm, I've gone at Luke. Me and Lucas have gone at each other. I've gone at with a lot of people. Like yeah, it's it's. <laughs> yeah, you've it's like gotten little, into like you've gotten into like, you know. Like we're getting into beefs, like I'll, because of like you said, you're financially invested. I just watch sports. Lucas like, owes me money that still. Kick? Yeah, the no, kick. you ain't never seeing that money. Go to Riley Patterson for that one. Pal. That was one twenty nine yard look, field goal. Looking back at it though, like making content and doing things, that was like one of the my favorite clips. Or, or I told you it would be at another place. Like once once you get out of that moment, because you're in that moment, and it, it might get like even like personal, and you get all at it. And then like a couple hours later, we literally walked outside of the studio later that night at like two in the morning, all of us, and we're like, oh, "I love you, boys." <laughs> hey, by the um, by the way, I'm an idiot, Brian. He meant Josh Sweat. Oh. Oh, that's my bad. I take accountability, Ryan. Oh, uh, Brian, uh, that's my bad. We appreciate. It. Yeah, Josh Sweat. I'm curious. I don't know what's what's his market. I mean, I'm pretty sure he just got re-signed like recently. I Did could he? be wrong. I'm pretty sure either last. Year. I I could be wrong. No, he but... he got. No, he's he's out of Philly. I know that. Unless they brought him back, but I think he's because they brought in Bryce Huff. Just for he... yeah, good point. Very good point. Yeah, then I would take Sweat then, just because I think he's a little bit more explosive. I think if they get rid of Reddick, it's for a reason, and yeah. Sweat would definitely be a lot cheaper. And to kind of guys, and to answer this question too, I, I think 
for me, watching sports, I've always been just, I, I, to be honest, and this sounds maybe a little, I don't know, this maybe sound like a little douchey. I just like watching sports and just like, I just get locked in. Like, that's just like, well, I guess that's just how I am. I know Mike kind of feels this way too. Me and him have talked about it where like when I'm watching sports, I just like, like you can ask Lex too. When I'm watching, I'm locked in. Like I barely, I don't really speak. That's why on the, on the watch parties, I used to just kind of chill there. I'd like you guys obviously you are entertaining, but I, I don't know. It's just how I've always been. Pistons, I can maybe get a little heated, but even when I'm watching anything, I just, I'm like zoned. No, I used to I, get grounded every other Sunday. Back no, in the that's day. How I just, too. I'll never forget, like Josh Freeman and the Bucks were terrible. The Lions were supposed to be shooing wins, and Josh Freeman and the Buccaneers went crazy. And we had this framed picture at my old house where it's right above the stairs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're like right. 12 year old Luke, dude. My, da my dad, I was, I was <laughs> done for a good like week. I, I wasn't let out the house. Yeah. I mean, unless it's like a devastating loss, like. But Mike, you're me, and you are the same way with that, Mike. Kind of. Yeah, no, I I don't even like really watching football in like sports bars. Like, I'd rather be in the basement. Like, the watch parties were cool and all, but Jeff, you know me and you, we were always ducked away in a different room watching by ourselves. But like, oh. uh, hey, well, there was others there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, are you on. sure? We were, all, on, we were all on camera. Mean, no, either way, like sports that? bars, like it was cool for the game. Super Bowl, but like even even that, like I would way rather be in the man cave chilling. Yeah, I'm with you. I enjoy man cave. I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy watching I enjoy watching I enjoy watching games. People yeah. might think it's an act or like oh Bo Booner's putting a show on. I'm just Booner. And yeah. I, I enjoy being myself. Yeah. No, Booner enjoys watching. I'm yeah, me and Mike, I'm it's a it's, it's like a romantic you know what i mean like me and mike we just watch you know it's like our moment you know we're there's other people in there though of course you're just digging, you're just, uh -huh. just yeah all right 1002 baby Stop, i appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, hey, <laughs> adam may do and he says probably what, what show, you guys man. are doing oh, yeah. hey jeff Love before him. we leave can you cue up that oh, music yeah. again as like outro music oh, oh you know what gosh. let's Don't get to that tetris here's that tetris music again hold on don't good for the soul booner let, let, hey, fellas, you guys have a great night. Everyone the high score is 120,000. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I can't wait for it. We got Jeffrey Column. We got Jeffrey Column to end it. Uh, but, you know, it, it, Jeffrey, we appreciate your hard work. Um, we Thanks for tapping in, Jeff. Appreciate <laughs> everyone, man. We love you guys. Don't it's forget, all, new, all, well. new, all the new viewers, subscribe, like the stream. It does support us. You can go watch our recap. We broke down DJ Reader and me and Lucas today on our channel. It's doing really well. Go check it out Wait, if you want boys. more information. Uh, and also tell a friend about uh, Crunch Time because it does help. What's up, Boone? Hey, I forgot to say this, but guess what, boys? DJ Reader, he is a dog. Oh, dog. 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 We will practice Absolute that, boys. Dog. He's a dog. <laughs> yeah, you we'll can't, you can't just act like we were all on the same page with you there, Booner. No, all right, hey. DJ Reader is a Let's go, cool, boys. All right, that was a lot better. Love you guys. All right, love you, fellas. We'll catch you tomorrow. Peace. Have a great night. Stay blessed. Peace. Peace.